Likes me looking as pale as possible. Cool. Let's see if we can get this. Oh, hey. <clears throat> There's me being super windblown. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, I would like to take some time to write in my little Facebook Live. Ninth like. <laughs> Red rum. Red rum. Okay, this is the point where we have people flowing in. Do 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 do. Cool. Yeah, YouTube does live chats now, that is for sure. Hello, fellow RV lifers. Now, before you click out this video, I want to let you know. Oh, there we go. Oops, it says Jackbox Party. That's not actually what's happening. That's awkward. <laughs> that is very strange. It says that we're playing Jackbox. We're not going to play Jackbox. Hate to, hate to break it to you. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure to let you guys know that we are going to have a discussion group about hacking all the things here in about an hour. So just trying to get the, the flow of people to come in since... You know, usually people do like a countdown clock for a hundred years, which I've never really understood, but I'm not a streamer. Teach me, oh streamers in the audience. I am a young Padawan. Um, I have a very, very special collaborator and core member of my life and soon to be yours in the Geek Beacon crowd um, that I cannot wait to introduce to you. But... I am going to let you guys know that here in the, um, we're going to do our discussion group for this topic, because that's what we love to do. We love to discuss. Hopefully you don't hear my mechanical keyboard too loudly. Uh, group to follow in our Discord. Yeah, we have so many people in our Discord now. It's crazy, like over 6,500 people, um, and we would love for you to be a part. So... Hello, hello. How's everybody doing? Where's everyone from? Coming on in. Excelente. Let's see what if there's anybody that can remove that it says that I'm playing Jackbox. That would be really awesome. Because we aren't playing Jackbox, we're playing science. <laughs> For science. Here's me looking, you know, categorically pale as usual. <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm gonna wait dutifully with my with my friend in the background, yet to be revealed. <sighs> YouTube are trying to stream. Part one. We can do this thing. <laughs> Alrighty. How's everybody doing today? I know that, so we did this weird sampling where we were going to, um, we essentially decided that we were going to try to capture the EU audience because a lot of you delightful people in the EU said, hey, you guys stream when it's, you know, ridiculously late at night here at like 3 a.m. Um, so that means that it's a lot of people's work days. So I'm not really sure how this will go. Welcome, everybody. Hail, open sorcerers. As you know, I am Nixie, here to talk about nerdy stuff that tickles your neurotransmitters, like the epicness that is RV hacks, house hacks, and just engineer vans. What is an engineer van? We'll find out. So let me paint you a picture, okay? Off-grid life, disconnected. You have no phones, no technology. It's just you, nature cicadas and RV, you're just completely disconnected. We're exactly like that, except the opposite. <laughs> Seriously though, we don't wanna be without power, we wanna make our own power. We don't wanna be off grid, we wanna make our own grid. So we'll keep the tech and lots of it, thank you. <laughs> 
So today, I'm very excited to say that we're going to talk tech mobiles, hacker vans, engineers on wheels, and in the spirit of tech, I brought my bestie that taught cybersecurity at the Pentagon and networking at NASA, and he's coming along to talk about what people are coming up with. So uh, Optiskeptic, he's an author, professor, and an inventor. And um, if you hang on one second, I'll bring him on screen. And he's not to mention bestie of like, you know, 15 years now, right? Hi. Oh, you look much more um, tan than me. <laughs> yeah. So hello. If I if I come closer, it changes. So all right. I have to one second moderate my distance. I like what you said about engineers on wheels. Uh, you know, I have that hoverboard do, thing. Do, we do, actually do, had do, do, do. I need to get my microphone to behave. I mean, engineers all on wheels, so that was fun. You're, sp are you speaking? <laughs> I, I was. Can you No, me? you did such a good job, and I oh. didn't troubleshoot my tech. No, wah, 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 wah. Oh, just oh, kidding. Yeah. He I said can I hear may you. have to change it. Oh, you can't hear me. Okay. So can you hear me? All that jazz. Can Let's you see. hear me now? See, it, what is that joke? It's like there's <laughs> um, my brain is like a browser window. I have 18 tabs open. One of the like three of them are frozen and I don't know where the music is coming from. <laughs> yeah, that's basically my brain. Alrighty. You heard him, but I didn't hear him. Oh, okay. Oops. I can now hear enough. him through. Alrighty. Well, because there's a lot of different configurations here. I like how it just has me on screen with like windblown look next to me. So it's like double the nixy, double the fun. Okay. Uh, let's see. Default. Keep talking, baby. Can you hear me now? Should have done this before, but you guys don't care do because it's okay. Nope, not working. Oh. <laughs> ha 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 ho ho ho, and a couple of la dee does. Of course, it never works on demo day. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> All right. We'll have to make up our own karaoke songs. I can hear you in the speaker, but not in my headphones. Aww. But they're bows, therefore they must be superior, right? Come on, plug and play. Actually, that is an interesting story. Didn't you say you watched uh, the old school Microsoft conf conference where they talked about the plug and play? You like how I showed that uh, Tesla oh, <laughs> RV? I love, I love the Tesla RV. <laughs> well, we'll talk about the Tesla RV and more. Um, did, you, did you hear about my comment about engineers on wheels? Uh, no, I didn't, but I'm okay. hearing you through not test test. I want to hear you through my microphone or through my headset. Oh, man. Well, let's give Torch slash Skeptic a round of applause for being very well prepared and having the thing that usually works for my technical setup every single time not work right away, which is not very typical. Side effects may include not being able to hear out of your headset that always worked before. Uh, maybe I'm not turning it up loud enough. Have I tried turning it off and back on again? That's excellent <laughs> advice. Yes. Ah. <laughs> All righty. Oh. I guess I was well, hey, that. you know, since you, you've been in IT for a good bit and you wrote a book on, you know, hardware, please help. <laughs> well, um, not, well, how about I'm this? If you want, you can talk so. about um, you can talk about that Microsoft conference because I think that plug and play thing is hilarious. And I'm going to continue. I might have to try to pop out of here. I don't know what that's going to do, though. So... I'm not sure which plug and play conference you're talking about. Test. Hi. 
But if you can hear me now, which I think... Well, as long as you guys don't care, I'll just listen to them from my speakers. Yeah. <laughs> Four <laughs> claps for OptiSkeptic. <laughs> you guys are going to make me do my intro again. <laughs> so is this bothersome for you guys if I'm listening to him from my speaker? Because that would be my preference. But I don't know. As long as you can hear me, then. I'm, yeah, the only I'm problem cool. is it would possibly be an echo. Yeah. I don't hear any echo. I don't know about anybody else. Really? Littering and up. Oh, I just heard double. Oh. No. Okay. Well, that was a fun exercise. I will be right back. I'm just afraid it's going to drop you. And I hyped you up and everything. Wah, 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 wah. Okay. Jeez oh, Louise. It's worked every other time. And 98% of statistics are made up on the spot. I don't want to restart my computer. I thought it was 78%. Oh, I was excited. I was like, I can hear it. It's like, no, that's coming through. Yeah. When I tried this on Linux, I had even more issues. So this is fun. Infecting networks pwned. Yeah, I know. My network is pwned. Hello, all 24 glorious people. Thank you for your patience. I'm sure that wait. no streamers ever have. Oh, wait. Like, how would it? It's so easy. It's just a cable. Okay. I might have to go grab. Well, I don't know. I'm going to go grab because we don't want to be too much later. I am going to try to grab another headset. Yay. I will tell you what happened is well, or let's just throw it to, to OptiSkeptic. I will be right back. And Kristen, you thought it was only 37%, okay. but I think that's I'm actually 73%. You can see a picture of me. <laughs> Have you watched uh, Yay, live streaming. Big Bang Theory, where um, Sheldon talks about how the perfect number is 73. Uh, I can't remember exactly why, but there's like twin primes and like 71 and 73 are both primes or something like that. But 73 or 37 and 73. Is, uh, oh, that's what it is. No, no, that's not right. Hmm. Oh, but that's a special prime because it's a twin palindromic prime because 37 and 73 are both prime numbers. That is a live stream. Well, that's kind of the proof. <laughs> There's not much hardware changed in IT. Hmm. Well, maybe not in the last, you know, three minutes. Oh, very good. Yes, of course you know what a palindrome is. <laughs> you are a wordsmith. I've forgotten what a twin prime is. I've heard of that. I, I don't remember the actual technical definition of it. Fibonacci sequence. Yeah, those are cool. Does anybody else here know what a twin prime is? At least I think that's the right terminology. Tell us. I'm gonna have to look it up. And let's look over here on the other screen. Twin prime. Twin prime. Ah, that's what I thought. So a twin prime is a prime number that's either two less or two more than another prime number. So 71 and 73 
uh, would be a pair of twin primes. But 37 is not, so it's not a twin twin. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll take care of the math questions, I think. Okay. There's always some technical issues. Yes, yes, there are. Yay. Does this sound okay? Sounds fine to me. Last minute headset switcheroo. Awesome. <laughs> Yay. What is okay. your math question? <laughs> oh no, I ha this is my punishment. I have to have indoor math questions because I just taught I just taught at least one person already something what a twin prime is. I actually wasn't sure myself so I had to look it up. <laughs> yep, Yay. that's right. I kind of am tempted to just right like Oh, there we go. This is good for your first ever live stream that I essentially threw you to the wolves. <laughs> but they're really nice wolves. They're like cuddly and, you know, everybody can vouch for their nice wolfness. No, I have like a headset from the early, I don't know. It feels like right before you got those, you had those chonky like fold out phones that were like bricks. And then they gave you those obtrusive earpieces that have like a, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're talking about prime numbers, but I think we can continue on now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do this again. Okay. Because, um, that wasn't satisfactory and that was just a, that, that was just to get the people to come in. Right. Cause that's what you do. You know, you just have as many foibles as humanly possible. And we wrote something really nice for you guys. It was a group effort. So I want to, I want to go ahead and, Get rid of you, Optoskeptic, so I can bring you back again. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll be bringing you back to life shortly. <laughs> all right. Hey, all. You. You're going to see me first time for the last time. Yes, first time for the last time. Exactly. As I... Okay. It's like, don't you hate when the streamer comes on and wastes your time and is just, like, not prepared? <laughs> but that's how we know it's real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The last time we tried to do this, we were just doing pre-recorded stuff. You guys are great. Okay. So I'm going to, Opti will be right back. Oh, hey, it's me, Super Pale Human again, about to, um, you know, take two of this thing that we wrote you because we love you and we wanted to explain what the purpose of this stream was. Because a lot of people come up on here and play video games and video games are great, but we like talking about nerdy stuff which is exactly what I do, if you recall. And especially if you've been watching me for a decade, you'll know that I'm Nixie and I'm here to talk about nerdy stuff that tickles your neurotransmitters like incredible RV hacks and engineer vans. What does that exactly mean, right? So let me paint a picture one more time. Imagine that you're in the wilderness, you want to get away from it all, be completely disconnected, no phones, no technology. It's just you and nature in an RV, or like maybe not even an RV, maybe just a little, a tiny house that you're completely disconnected. So we're exactly like that, except we're the opposite, right? We do not want to be without power. We want to roll our own. We don't want to be off grid. We want to make our own. So we're going to keep the tech and, and lots of it. And we're going to talk about that today. So thank you very much. So today, we're going to talk about tech mobiles, hacker vans, engineers on wheels. And in the spirit of tech, I brought my bestie that taught cybersecurity at the Pentagon and networking at NASA along with me to kind of talk about what people are coming up with. So Opti is an inventor. He's an author. He's an instructor and he instructed at IBM, Dell and Intel. And as we said before, the Pentagon. So Opti's academic background and expertise combined with my lead hacks and coding skills are Wonder Twin Powers Activate. And we need to really get in on this and see how it all works. 
Also, I would love for you guys to check out our Discord after this. We're going to have a discussion group. So if you're interested in tiny, tiny home living or RV hacking or the engineer vans or you're just curious or you have a whole plan or you've done it yourself because I know I've invited some of you that are actively like coding out of a van. Let's get into it. Okay. Was that better? Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> I love that. Oh, cybersecurity. I found something really cool recently. Perfect. Excellent candidate for the Discord. Um, so I don't know if you have this view, um, Opti, but if you want, there should be, you see the um, the chat that's scrolling by on the right-hand side, yes, I assume. I mm -hmm. Okay. You should be able to hit a star if you'd like to address some of those, um, some of those comments and stuff like that. But we wanted to essentially break down what hacker vans are. Does that sound fair? Sounds good. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, hacker vans are essentially a vehicle that's outfitted to function as a mobile living and working center. Uh, if you've maybe, who has heard about digital nomadia or digital nomads? Love to know. Ooh, there's 36 people in here. Hello, all. Oops. You can go ahead, Torch, if you want to break down what hacker sure. vans are, the yeah, sure. self-reliance. and. Well, um, let me think. Uh, probably the first iteration of a hacker van that I thought of was uh, when I had the gaming center and when we'd have overnight LAN parties, or even just you know during the day. But uh, when we ran out of seats and we have more people subscribed. They only had room for about 30 people. I wanted to be able to bring in like uh, a bus or a RV or something and uh, set it up with more computers and uh, be able to expand the, the LAN party. And of course, then you need a server and you need networking and you know all that. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, so I better put in our rack. Uh, I better put in, you know, uh, desks, uh, figure out how best to arrange them to get the maximum in. I didn't quite, uh, I, I didn't have an RV to do that at the time, but I just ran across one this past year, almost exactly a year ago, that actually was used kind of like that one in Stripes where they actually had a, a console. Uh, it had a, a rack already in it, which was amazing. Uh, and he didn't use it for a server, though. He used it for a closed circuit television. He was like a security consultant. So he drove that thing around. So that was totally a hacker van. Unfortunately, it had uh, sat around for too long. And so I have to gut it out. I still have the rack in there, uh, but I've got to clear everything else out and, and re refurbish it completely. But I'll probably keep the rack. Yeah. Uh, I, and I think that's like, we love to lean into the spirit of open source and having a rack and a server. I mean, I've witnessed it firsthand. And I don't know if you guys in the chat know about, um, you know, Linux Unplugged or Jupyter Broadcasting, but they basically were like, when we brought Buttercup, <laughs> oh, yeah. for, and we endeavor to make actually We'll, we'll play this one video, but we do want to delve into the actual reactions of different hacker vans because that was initially why we're here. Um, yeah, and, and, you know, hacking is my thing, and John is an engineer. Um, well, oh, secret, his name is John. He has He's a man <laughs> of many names. Um, but between the two of us, we started wondering, you know, like what else could people build when you combine transport and tech? So um, you're going to hear a lot of the open source, open community movement, um, self-reliance, and, um, you know, what is not to like about Geekmobiles. And if you tune in and, and stay with us, we want to talk to you about our project that was just a glimmer of something that we wanted to do a year ago, and s we've since done it, um, and that's Buttercup. And yes, like Princess Bride, Buttercup. So um, I think we should... I think we should roll this hey video. Guys, Ooh. I wanted to introduce you to Buttercup. We're rolling it. Also known as the 1976 GMC Motorhome. Or you may have seen it on the movie Stripes as the urban assault vehicle. My best friend ever of 10 years came from the Midwest, as did I, to revamp one of these little bitsy homes. We're doing this as a little nod to the Geeks Abroad project, showing that not all who wander are lost. And we're doing it in the form of little bitsy homes. And I will show you Yay. real quick. 
If you don't know Buttercup from Princess Bride, you won't know this, but we are gonna have fun storming the castle. Please follow our journey. It'll take a miracle. I love how it just kicks on without even, <laughs> I was gonna pause it, but yeah. Yep. And that's what it's all about. Yeah, it's huge, but we'll talk more on that because we are now late because of me. So if if you don't mind, let's get into it. Let's talk about some people that have some even cooler vans uh, and what engineer vans are and everything like that. Sound good? Yep. And also, um, you're going to follow along. This. I haven't seen these yet. Uh, I kind of looked at a little previews, so I know they're probably going to be interesting. So if they aren't, I guess we'll probably move on to the next one. But yeah, it'll, exactly. I want to I want to see it to kind of give myself ideas on how I want to implement my version. Yeah. And when we do the discussion group, you guys are all invited to the discord. Um, if you have your own ideas, we have kind of a little schedule or little agenda of how we wanted to kind of ask for some info. So let's see, what should we pick? Um, Absolutely. I don't collaboration is key. Yeah. Collaboration is uh, collaborative community is basically what geek mm -hmm. beacon is all about. Um, yeah. Let's try that. I mean, this is absurd. So I, we definitely, I can't tell if it's absurd in a good way or an absurd in a bad way. Um, let's see if I can get it so we can appear. Oh, we little, okay. That works. Uh, it still looks like I'm looking. Okay. Yeah. So every, who, who knows what this is? <laughs> um, somebody saw this on the street one day and they had to, um, I actually looked up the Addy after this, but that is the Guy Fox mask, AKA V for Vendetta, blue pill, red pill. Like it's hit, it's checking all the hacker check boxes. Oops. Probably shouldn't have. Oop. I hold that more helpless a creature, the more entitled to protection by man from the cruelty of man. Um, which is really interesting because this also is a vegan hacker van. Um, yeah, we don't know what's inside it, but I just thought it's a great way to start. Because um, have you guys ever met like the hardcore vegans? I mean, the humanity, earth, animals, balance, consciousness, peace, love, equality, and health, right? All that sounds really good, but why is this van terrifying to me? <laughs> Yeah, the the red pill and blue pill stuff, I I know that it's like if you take one of them, it's like you're willing to accept whatever you're being told. And if you take the other one, you're yeah. willing to actually look into the facts and uh, and research things. Uh, yeah. But you have to be careful with that, too, because where you research sometimes will feed you bad, bad information, too. So always got to be careful. Yeah. Exactly. Never be afraid to do what's right, especially if the well-being of a person is at stake. Society's punishments are small compared to the wounds on our soul. So we went and mm. we we kind of looked in advance because we didn't want to like, you know, get a virus on on live or something like that. But I don't know if you saw there was an actual website called Wake the v -v Up, <laughs> <laughs> and so we looked it up uh, and. Yeah, I don't know. This is somebody who's like really dedicated. Uh, it, should we should totally, we pull up the website or? Um, I haven't seen it yet, so I don't know. But uh, sure, it's totally a good example of of a hacker van. I mean, that's that's what we're doing. Um, I have no idea what it looks like inside, so I don't know how much of that I'd like to interpret. But I love I love the sentiments in terms of uh, be aware and don't just uh, take what people tell you at Facebook. Yeah, time. exactly. Uh, That's... And I, I like what you said earlier about roll your own because uh, the open source community is all about initially, you know, Linux versus Windows and things like that. It's like roll your own. Don't be able to create your own operating system and don't don't rely on somebody else to hand something to you. Exactly. That made the decisions for you. And that's a, exactly the same thing with getting on the road, being able to live anywhere, make your own power, uh, you know, just be independent. And, and with that being said, we're going to, we're going to try out what this, Oh, it's a WordPress site. So I don't think they're like super elite hacksers. <laughs> so I'm not terrified of this, but yeah, this is the website. Wake the, should we, okay. I feel like we need to do a poll red pill or blue pill. 
Um, <laughs> I forget which one is which. I, oh, I God. Read a little, a little bit on it, but I, I don't remember which. Who, who knows that? You take the red pill and the story ends. Is that it? Oh, and that's and when then you, you go take back to the your, blue the pill. Yeah, you take the blue pill and then you find out how the how how low the rabbit hole goes or how long the rabbit hole goes, right? Yeah. I wonder if I can actually do a poll. Like, I, I feel like I could try to make a poll. Let's see if I can. I don't know if I've done this before. I'm going to attempt it. Um, yeah. I was like, what pill do we take? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah. I can well, do a poll. Okay. Red I'm, pill I'm or blue pill? Back the curtain. I'm for pulling back the curtain every time. So I believe that would be the blue pill. Oh. Yeah. I shouldn't, I shouldn't prejudice the... I don't know. So we should hear what everybody else. Okay, oh, we're, doing, we're doing a quick poll. <laughs> all the pills. <laughs> Let's take the purple pill. You can't even go anywhere on this website. It literally is like choose your pill. That's not creepy at all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there should be a poll created. I'm waiting for the poll results. Okay. Hmm. Okay, red pill or blue pill pill. Red versus blue. Yep. Okay. Red pill. All right. Red pill. Here we go. Uh oh. Are you against all forms of discrimination? Are you seeing this? I didn't see that. It's not showing you that. Oh, creepy. Okay. Maybe <laughs> I'm like, oh no, anyway, should we not be doing this? <laughs> let's bring on the tech. Yeah, let's bring on the tech. But anyway, yeah, it asks us if we're, so it's basically asking us questions of, would you support animal cruelty if it provided you with some form uh, of pleasure? That. No. Oh, would you, wait. would you, do you think murdering someone innocent against their will can oh. be justified? Is this like true hardcore vegans? Because look at this, uh, must see, must, yeah. <laughs> must sees, must hears, must tastes. I'm scared. I'm clicking on it. Oh, oh God, it. what's happening? Yeah, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, you guys, that van was so hardcore, and it's literally just vegan meat, and it looks delicious. <laughs> like, that looks delicious. I would eat that. Congratulations, the nom anonymous hacker van, dude. It got dude. me in there. Yeah. <laughs> it got me in there. Um, so that is one end of the spectrum. Let's go back to the playlist, shall we? Um all righty. Uh, what what should we pull up? Should we pull up the guy that made his own uh, circuit, his own electrical circuit to to kick off his van? Should we do the military vehicle one? Let's start. Let's see. Let's not do the military one for uh, first, first. Yeah. Let's let's, do let's go. That. Let's do the circuit one. I was thinking we could do Glitch's Hacker Van because I know there's some Hack 5 friends out there. Okay. Um, Hack 5 is, if you guys have, I mean, Hack 5 has been around since the days of old. And they, um, I am friends with Darren. We I worked at the same network. So let's see what we got. Ooh, seizure inducing. Glitch. Hack a day. I, I can't hear the sound on this. Am I supposed to? Yeah. Can you guys not hear the sound? I can hear the sound. Hmm. I can hear the sound. Let me try it again for no, you. Usually all. it's video that messes up. In this case, it's a sound. <laughs> I got you. We got this. <laughs> We're going to have no technical difficulties because we got that whole cluster out of the way. How about now? look at it yep. and then here in a few months that's good we'll probably do this again with a bunch of the changes so starting off let's give you a look at the exterior so the van itself is a 2012 mercedes sprinter 2500 yeah. okay what is it with people in sprinters just quickly tell me why people like sprinters um i think because they're aerodynamic and it's tall enough you can walk in them uh mm -hmm. but also, there are two, at least two different versions of spreaders. They're made by Mercedes-Benz, but uh, in some set of years, uh, they partnered with Chrysler, and then they would actually like ship all the parts over and have them assembled here. I think they actually, I don't know, they built them and then disassembled them, shipped them over here and reassembled them. 
in any of that, uh-huh. I think the ones, at least in the United States, the ones you want to get are the ones that were assembled by Chrysler because uh, there's more parts availability here because I don't yeah. know parts are shipped over. I get it. I, That's I, what I've heard. I made mistakes of, of getting, I guess you could say, import vehicles and then being like, the parts are impossible to find and oh. very expensive. It's like... <laughs> it has yeah. the V6 3.0 liter turbocharged engine, and it actually moves pretty good for as little weight that's currently in it. On the back here, we have a ladder so that you can access the roof and solar panels and all that. We have some in- external antennas for the modem. You guys have seen that mod before. Mm-hmm. There is a bike rack for my electric bike that uh, we'll be doing a video oh, yes, on shortly. Good. Otherwise, it's pretty plain bike. on the outside. You can see just a hint that there's solar panels up there. And if you're a little further away, you can kind of see the roof fans. But it's pretty stealth. And now let's have a look at the ins. Okay, stealth. So stealth van is another thing in van culture that's talked about a lot. Stealth. And that's because why? It's not legal in the U.S. to live out of your van or? It's it's because uh, in a lot of places they won't let you park overnight. I mean, you could so, live in your van, but you can't live in your van on a public street. So they yeah. wouldn't like it if it looked like it was obviously. That's why RV life could be possibly problematic because it's like intended for people sleeping initially. Right. Yeah. Like, I know there's lots of places where they won't allow RVs to be sitting on the road for more than 30 minutes. <laughs> In some city ordinances, <laughs> impossibly in city ordinance city crazy. ordinances that I've been a part of. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah. Okay. Let's continue. Uh, I wanted to hop into the listen only chat on the Discord so people know where um, you guys can still hear me, right? Yeah. So I'm hopping into the Discord since people seem to have. Um, we're kind of confused about where to go. Uh, from the Discord side of things. We're not starting our discussion group yet. Um, there. It's weird. It, do- it never sa- it doesn't say that I'm live. Bummer deal. Anyway, let's let's keep rolling with it. A Hi. sleeper van, yeah. Starting off, we have our step that has just a nice piece of carpet on it. And that's <laughs> simply because when you're in the desert, you track a lot oh. of sand in. So having a good way to desert, uh, yep. dispose of that's good. Now on the inside here, a lot of people have asked how I use the bathroom. No that frills. Seems to be everyone's primary concern. And while <laughs> there's a toilet, this is a there's a toilet, toilet or a porta potty. As the name implies, you just take it, you use it, and then you've got you know a week to two weeks, depending on how often you go, and you can dump that at any uh, outhouse, porta potty, uh, dump station, whatever. This is a lot easier than having a dedicated black tank below the van because you can dump it just about anywhere. You don't need a dedicated RV hookup. Behind it, yeah. we have a scrub bag. And that is actually how I do my laundry. I toss a couple days of dirty clothes in. Scrub a bag. Huh. Yeah, I've done my laundry in all sorts of random locations when I was traveling. I like to travel months at a time, uh, though I haven't actually lived in a van um that's would be a there would be a logical conclusion to that but it also it's also kind of funny because it's like you don't have a dedicated black tank but you're also like walking around with your toilet in your arm so i don't know <laughs> there's trade-offs and there yeah. you toss some soap in some water shake it up and uh you know agitate it for a few minutes and then do a rinse cycle you have clean laundry you just hang dry it super energy efficient super space efficient works great above the cab you can see a custom shelf i installed this is just a wood shelf coated in uh carpet there and this is where i keep all my clothes towels and soft stuff so that if it ever did fall it wouldn't be uh super catastrophic it's got some pretty skooka metal brackets so i'm not too worried about it mm. and it also <laughs> is the hanger for it wouldn't my be curtain. catastrophic now, this is actually acoustic sound deadening material super, super thick super dense material yeah. that captures echoes, road noise, and all of that. It also makes the cab very quiet when I'm driving, so any of the rattles you might get from the back don't get up front. No, what it I also like about is this, completely uh, opaque. And you, yeah, he's, what? Just showing, he's just showing, he, he doesn't have a, a, a totally um, expensive build. You know, he's just making things work. So yeah. that's a nice way to start. So anybody can start. You don't have to have the perfect, you know, 
yeah. art is artistic type thing. I mean, he'll get I there do. probably, but. Yeah, and I agree. And I think we're also going to see some like insanely expensive builds. So you can see all the way from just, I, I like the idea of dipping your toe in the water. And actually Glitch basically did a modified version of his van. And it's even smaller now. So this is, but I really like this tour more. You can't see any light from the outside though. when you have it actually properly Probably latched to the Velcro. Yeah. Turning <laughs> off to the left, we have my cabinet structure. Now, these are just cabinets from RB Components. These were in here when I got the van. And this is my favorite cabinet because it's actually the organized one. <laughs> this is all my drone parts, robotics parts, oh. electronics, raspberry. That's awesome. Yep. If you can identify what everything is because it's clear. I was like, I, I also love label makers. But a lot of times, you can, as long as you put all like items together, it'll probably Pies, work out. Hack 5 gear. Ham radio stuff. So much more. Mm -hmm. In the left cabinet, I have, have drones parts, uh, personal effects, that kind of stuff. And then the right side, I have, you guessed it, drone parts and more maker equipment. <laughs> so that's how hey. I keep bringing you all the cool projects from on the road. And then we get over to the desk. We have a 20. Okay. All right. I like the little portable. I have to have a keyboard with a numpad, though. Like, I'd love to know. I was like, numpad people represent because I've i just lived on it. I can't do numbers uh, horizontally. They have to be in a numpad. Monitor. This is actually running on a DC to DC converter so that it actually is powered off of a 12 volt battery bank and is super Look efficient. Look at that. It's all from 20 watts. <laughs> I have connected to it a Chromecast, which is how I watch YouTube in the evenings. Uh, <laughs> su again, super efficient. Draws like three watts. And then I also have a USB hub for my little laptop as well as a docking station for my phone. And I do most of my recording and actual day-to-day -day work on my phone. Off to the left, we have the modded Muddy with the external antennas. You guys know and love that. I've made a few videos on that. Those go, the antenna cables go under the bed and to the back door. Now, just under the desk, we have the 3D printer. Now, this is actually Yay. in a cabinet. It's not properly mounted yet, but it's super rugged and I've not had any of You can 3D print in a small little container like that? Well, you don't want to be 3D printing while you're moving. Yeah. Oh, that would be unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it can just be encapsulated completely? Like you uh, could shut the door on it and just let it print? Actually, it works better that way because a lot of them will benefit from having heat. So sometimes they actually put plastic cabinets around them to hold the heat <laughs> I love how Bishop said he just needs a good 3D printer. I don't know if that's before the printer showed up or <laughs> he's talking about the printer kind <laughs> that he needs to have yeah, a different that's, brand. That's a yeah, pretty basic coming out one there. I don't know the yeah. brand. But... Yeah, but hey, if it's just to like print out print parts for your RV, probably does the job. Anything going down Do we the have the no, I don't print. Uh, video of the, you said he shrunk, shrank it on a newer video. Do we have that one too or not? Yeah, we do. While I'm driving. Oh, that'll However, be really great to see how it he is again super what efficient. This yeah, thing draws less than change. 80 watts while printing, yep. even with the heat bed on. Great little printer, super rugged. It's actually taken a couple of falls and still <laughs> keeps on ticking. Under that, I have some filament and spare propane. Now, I actually have a diesel heater. The propane is just a backup in case something happens to the diesel heater and That's I'm in a cold smart. environment. It'll get me through a few nights. Oh, now, yeah. Sitting in a I van is a difficult thing. You can't just have a rolling computer chair. Otherwise, it would be going everywhere. Yep. You'd have to secure it. So this is actually... Shout out to Technomadia. Tear, dry... Tear diver is correct. Why did I call it a tear diver? It's like tiny dancer. Like a boat chair, like from a small boat. So I have that mounted to Look some at that. black Speaking iron of pipe, boat. so I can actually unthread it and move it out of the way. Oh, yeah. And we just did that today because we went and picked up a bunch of 4 by 8 sheet material because some big changes are coming to the van. Ooh. The seat flips up like so. I find it comfortable enough for the two to six hours a day that I sit at the desk doing work. Off to the left, we have a cabinet structure. This I th I think we can very quickly just say that you've the the best friends ever of living in a tiny home life is like hooks for things, folding things, things that can slide underneath other things, um, little compartments and bins, <laughs> and clamps. Look at all those clamps. <laughs> yep. It used to be where I held the old AC200 battery bank. And there it took up so much space here. Mm. 
I've since removed that and now have food storage. This is my super efficient 12 volt fridge. Yep. It Everyone slides out and then you can open it just like a cooler. It I uses so little power, power that really uh, even in the PNW and my solar hmm? system, just like you just said. <laughs> Yeah, the bed is just about three feet off the deck, and this allows me to have great storage under it Underneath. for garage space. Hidden storage. The bed itself is a 10 inch Amazon uh, Essentials or whatever memory foam mattress. It's squished in a little bit. I have about 68 inches of sleeping space. I'm 5'10, it's a little tight. You sleep diagonally, it works fine. On the back wall, I have a blanket hung up. Again, another acoustic blanket. This help keeps it super quiet in the van, and you also don't end up brushing your arm against the cold metal. The back doors are insulated, but they still get colder. <laughs> Travel buddy. Yeah. Under the bed, like I said, we have the garage space. I noticed people... that is... Uh, yeah, well... <laughs> I noticed people were mentioning there's a delay in the stream. Um, we toggled it to be higher quality, but we can try switching it to lower latency if it bothers people. But yeah, so everybody needs a stuffy... And excuse away. the lack of light. Yeah, that's that is, intense. Uh, on the list to do, but YouTube is rough. That's the battery bank, especially because we're using the a relay system. I just uploaded a video on last week, and as you can see, it is nice and out of the way, and it leaves. Okay, what do we got yep. here? Electrical engineers. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. Okay. There's room for all I... kinds of other stuff back here. I still needed to install the latches on it, but mm -hmm. it's been doing the job. Today is the first well, day that I haven't actually had a full charge. This Go is ahead. a reaction yeah. video, so I think we but, uh, probably I should over um, get some reactions. So what does everybody else think about uh, that? Uh, not safe? <laughs> yeah, that could be. What, what Making like me about, sweat. Yeah, what I, what I like about this is that, like I said before, he doesn't have it, you know, picture perfect. Uh, it shows that you can get started at any at any place at your own pace yeah. just um, minimally a fire hazard yeah <laughs> he's got some things there that uh but i mean like his wooden cabinet and obviously he built it for his needs and yeah probably redo it and tidy it up and make it you know uh more what he wants in the future which is what you said on what will happen in another video but uh it's it's there's always two time uh what do they say there's always two best times to get started. Uh, one is uh, like two weeks ago and the other is today. <laughs> so never yeah, be afraid exactly. to get started. Don't, yeah, don't wait. It's... Don't wait. Let's and I think, that's, I think that's what I appreciate, but I guess there are two different types of viewers and, and audience, right? There's audience that likes to see those really intense builds that have already been com fully completed and perfected because it's kind of like that, you know, satisfying channel where you see people like cutting through yes. jello <laughs> and it's like, Ooh, this is very satisfying, but there's but also is... the struggle that goes into it, you yeah. know, trial and error. And, you know, you see the, the, the perfectly coiffed finished product and it is inspirational because like, wow, I could be like that. But then when you start doing it, um, and you know it's going to take a long time. It can be discouraging. So it's also inspirational to see something like this because yeah. you say, you know, you start and you keep making it better. Uh, yeah. This is the new van. You have to start. Yeah. Okay. Man, but this time, the smaller one. This time on Hack 5. <laughs> <laughs> Still need to put a couple of videos out. I have it. I have like three videos on my Linux channel that doesn't get any traction, so was maybe this like the, Hack 5. Is this this the is the one? new. Yep. Okay, let's see this. We're gonna go over our. Oh, look at that. He snapped and it shrank. Cute. I wouldn't be able to do this. This is not my jam. I need a little bit more. Like, if I'm gonna live full time out of this thing, but I don't know if he's living full time out of this thing, so we'll find out. See, welcome to, you know. 2020, 2019, where you have to have montages. Sitting here, sipping on my cappuccino, I figured I'd tell you a little bit about this place. Okay. This is Fritch Fortress Campground in North. Oh, he's talking Driving about the all the way up from Texas to Colorado. Let's get to the actual the tour. Yeah. Because yeah, we don't want to be super not the very similar engine. This is the technically we're supposed to have our discussion group now, so I don't know if we can push it back a little bit, but that would be awesome. Half an hour yeah, at least. Duratech. My first let's, car was a Ford Escort. Yeah, if we can if we can push it back. No, you're cool, Rimwolf. What's up, everybody? 
Um, yeah, for those of you who are just joining us, we are talking about hacker vans, engineered, um, like really interesting engineer and design and, and like uh, solar powered, electric, all sorts of stuff. People being super self-reliant with their transport and their living. Um, it's, it's really cool to see that cooperative community and people really leaning into it and helping each other with their builds. It's very similar to like the joy that you get from being like, cool, look at my PC, here's my build and being like, um, you know, but this is also what I live out of. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, too. So, and it had the ZTEC 2.0 liter. For all intents and purposes, they're the same engine. This one's just a little more modern. So I know it inside and out. So when something breaks, I can fix it. And something will break. It's got about 180,000 miles at this point. I, mean, it's shorter. I put uh, about 15 of that on in just the last few months alone. As you can see, there's a massive roof rack with a light bar on the top. And I built that myself. Uh, just welding, grinding, all that jazz. The light bar could use a bit of a wash. It's a bit of a bug magnet as it works as an air dam. Up there, there is 300 watts of solar panels. Okay. And those charge the battery. Oh, it's kind of a mess in here. I really need to clean this up. But uh, I'm... Is that, is that lead acid? Kind of. Kind of looks like it. That's... Yeah, did it freeze? Oh, I, really I muted myself. I just said, um, we have a member of the community that has a hacked yacht. So if you do, you can drop a link, um, especially in our Discord. We will check it out, oh, maybe yeah. react to it. I'm going to end up adding a second battery here, but I'm using a Renogy power system. Oh. And right there is the heart of it all. That is the combination 50 amp DC to DC converter and solar charge controller. So I hope that that's will not actually what take power from the alternator as well and feed it into the battery. So I get charged while driving too. Now this, I have also just recently added a 40 amp charger and that is connected to this guy. So I have shore power as well. And that 40 amp charger will run all my loads while still charging the battery. Even the zero breeze air conditioner. I just recently installed that while I was down in Texas where it is hot and I'm very grateful for it. It is a little on the undersized side for the van, but if I just got done with a drive, all I have to do is open this curtain, turn the AC on full blast, and it will chill the rest of the van down. And then the zero breeze is plenty to keep it fully uh, at the proper temperature, even with it being zero 100 breeze. degrees out. It's awesome. Check in out. here, I also have my two five gallon water jugs that provides water for the inset sink and that just goes to a gray water drain that you can put a bucket under if you're in the uh, kind of place that you can't just dump your gray water but mo most places it's legal and perfectly acceptable to just let your gray water dump now just like the sprinter i have a cassette toilet and i have a mini fridge and those get bungeed in for driving now you might be wondering there's a bench in here but i don't see a bed Aha, the mensch is a bed, as long as I don't let my bag drop. And there you go. It is actually a bigger bed. Okay, so that would be what I would say is an improvement. He made a essentially converter, like almost like a Murphy bed, but just, you know, a convertible bed. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Like that's an, and kind of a nod to what you were talking about is like you take yeah. it and you live in it and you're not going to know what you want immediately. So like, just try it out and then improve on it every then time. It was in the sprinter. I can sleep he, fully extended on this with probably, no issues. And that is just riding on some 500 pound drawer yeah. slides. I built this not whole mechanism tall. out. Yeah. I'm really quite happy with how it works. It's kind of inspired by the Westphalia vans. Now a bit of a tour on the inside. Just like this printer, I have a shelf up here. That's where I keep most of my food and my clothes and other such things. There's a little bit more food and just spices and stuff along this shelf. And up here I have my butane stove. Works great. Don't I don't even have an inverter in this van because I don't need one to run microwave or anything like that. Yeah. Here you can see the mm. outlet vent of the air conditioner. Not for me. <laughs> 
I like food too much. I, I really yeah. enjoy cooking. So like, yeah. this is an awesome example of like a truly like hacker live, you know, super mobile, you know, tech forward unit, but like food, making food makes me happy. So I would, I would and, need to have yeah. something where. And that just yeah. goes to show that there are different kinds of hacker vans. And this is uh, at a level that uh, he's probably comfortable, you know, camping out. And uh, yeah. I can too, but I'd rather have a little more comforts of. of uh, yeah, is where I would normally have my exactly. 3D printer and all my a maker bigger, storage room. bits. And I actually need to face this cabinet. Though. So, however, I'm currently on a trip to go pick up the last few of my things out of storage. So I needed all the space I can get. I left my maker stuff down in a, at a friend's place in Texas. And I've got 12 volt power routed over there. You can see my USB-C charger I use for my laptop. I actually have a little leaf back in here. I'm not going to get it out right now. That goes in and it makes for a really great desk. I also have a fantastic roof fan and the battery meter. I think... What, what about the battery meter? That's really helpful. I mean, that's one of the things that you find oh, yeah. yourself doing in oh, yeah. the RV hacking is that you're constantly aware of the power, especially yeah. because he's running yeah. solar, which is very interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So the, uh, the person in our community that has a um, hacked yacht, feel free to drop a <laughs> link. Uh, we would love to check that out. We have not added that to the list. Yeah. The cab, so, there's nothing too special going on in here. On I would like to different kinds of hacker vans because this one is at a level mm -hmm. where like you can live out of your car, you can live out of a van and he's and yeah. you have a lot more room and you can have more room for customizing things and have an actual bed. Now, I did that a lot in my college days and it it's really good for when you travel. When I was when I didn't have a bed in the in the van uh, I was always anxious about where was I, where was I going to sleep? Where was I going to get a motel, have to find a camping place, anything like that. And so because of that stress level, anxiety, you can't drive as much. But as soon as I put a bed, bed in the van, it's like I could just drive for hours because longer because it's like I never had to worry about where I was going to stop. I could just stop, pull over, take a nap, and I'm good. And so that's a... The most basic level but it has its advantages and uh and i appreciate that but i want more <laughs> so <laughs> i want to carry all my 3d i have a drone i have a 3d printer i have my electronics gadgets i want to have at least three monitors not not one not two but three uh oh yeah I, that I, brings I up a, maybe, the next video two. so that brings up the next video. Do you want to show the gaming setup sure, van? Let's do that. Let's yeah, do that. let's do that. So before we because start, I just want to say that I am not a computer expert whatsoever. There are so many things that I should have done differently about my gaming and editing setup, but I didn't because, again, I am not an expert. <laughs> and what I did just sort of works for me. Also, I am... I mean, that's I'm basically what we just a said. Licensed electrician, so please take whatever I say about solar power and <laughs> power consumption. Take it with a grain of salt. It's still, huh? It, that's a great segue because it still looks a little bit um, about please, you know, a little bit bigger than research. maybe. But what is this? Is yeah. it a van or an RV or what is this? Before you this, dive deep into I think, it, this is a van. In your van. Cool. Yep, this is his van. Yeah. Or working with any sort of electrical components in your yep, van. Yep, yep. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk about my Gundam van, switch. definitely. So, under this beautiful desk here, I'm actually powering two computers. One of those Ooh. computers got I actually use for work, which there. I do editing, visual effects, graphic design, one. and the other computer yeah. is strictly for gaming. So my work computer is actually a Mac Mini M1, and the reason <laughs> I went with the Mac Mini is because not, not Look at only the... do I just love working on Mac Oh, okay. and so like, oh God, cable management. And then you have I th either that's a capture card or it's a hard drive. And then they yeah. just like kind of Velcroed attached it. But like you can see the, the you know, they really were meticulous about cable management. Yeah. I suck at cable management. Oh, yeah. no, I mean, I would bad. honestly, I would honestly pay for somebody to deal with that, to help with that. Um, 
Yeah, we'll we'll try to fix that YouTube delay. I didn't realize it was that big Mac of a OS deal. OS for work oh. doing editing, graphic design, and visual effects. But the Mac Mini M1's processing power is so much higher than its power consumption. Now, when this Mac Mini is firing on all pistons, <laughs> okay, he's like I selling us a Mac Mini Max now. <laughs> yeah, I was like, when it's fine, I'm firing on all pistons. Van. Okay, moving on. It's like a van. Every single inch matters. I used to live in a van with a full-size gaming Ooh, tower, yeah. and of course it ran Team everything solar. great. Yeah, I saw that. The downside of that was it took up so much space. Let's let's try to. There we go. Is 300 watts for a total of 600 watts. Okay, of we're solar. going back. We're going back. Yeah. Okay. Essentially, I have two solar panels mounted on the roof of my van. Nice. Each one of them is Ooh. 300 watts. Those are biggins. Those are biggins, biggins. Yeah. It's for a total of 600 watts of solar panels. Those solar Huh? I, I was going to say, you should be able to, and then it's like, no, that's probably about right. You should be able to get 250 watts per square meter. So yeah, uh, I think maximum you could possibly have would be about 2,000 watts, maybe 1,200 watts. And it looks like you could, if you crammed it on there, took every square inch, you could have two more of them. Exactly, exactly. But that's why, like, I an RV, so too, you can have, like, twice that on an RV. Yep. panels capture energy from the sun and then transfer that energy to two batteries that are under the bed of Ooh. my van. And from those batteries, that power gets sent to an inverter. And basically what yep. an inverter does, yep. it inverts DC power, which is the power that the solar panels generate, and it inverts it to AC power, <laughs> which is the same type of power. It captures your energy house from has. the sun. And having an inverter <laughs> like that. Battery not only Hook up household it's true. Power I have a fusion. Event, but it allows you to I have a fusion power source. It's a yeah, ninety-three million miles away. That's all. Ooh, you gotta love that shot, though. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. See, you know, that's another thing that I notice is as much as you can open your Absolutely. van. Yep. Open your tiny home to the outside to make the outside feel more that it's part of your living space. Yeah, earlier that probably changes everything. Earlier in the comments, yeah. uh, somebody said, "Oh, I, I couldn't do that. I'd feel so claustrophobic." And I I hear you. But what you do is, if you plan out your living space to be partly outside and inside, and you have an open door and a big right. window, you can really deal with a lot of that claustrophobic feeling. Because you know, I can't sleep in a top bunk where I only have like foot and a half or two feet I, that would be horrible uh, i tried it once so yeah i just couldn't do it um so well yeah. I, I feel that way too but like the rv i'm in now it's perfectly fine and the gmc is perfectly fine um uh, yeah awesome and we're gonna oh especially the gmc with those huge huge windows it's almost like you know, yeah outside. and what <laughs> It's such a shame that they only really produce GMCs for just a I handful know, of years. We'll get to that yeah. later in the show. We're, we're extending our show uh, just a little bit longer so we can touch base on what yeah. we, what our vision is for buttercup going e buttercup. Um, yeah. Princess bride shout out. Um, yeah. And also it's interesting how he put all the batteries under the floor. It's, it is really interesting oh, yeah. to Low, figure out like the different space. types of, yeah, and it is true. There are um, ways of really convert. So you know how like when you're building a rig and you're like, okay, what kind of power supply should I get? Um, you know, I would always like originally before I knew anything about power, <laughs> I would just be like default 1000 watts. Boop, boop, boop. But now, you know, you really can actually just go in there and there's a calculator to see this um, component would need this amount of power. And the the it's very similarly true for um, you know, RV hacking or house hacking, where you know exactly what power you would be drawing in. So theoretically, you could get the the electricity setup yeah. oh, that you would need for that. Chair driver ju just uh, chair diver just made a comment about Orange Julius. Uh, I, if he's talking about the same guy I read about, he's awesome, and he ended up with like three or four GMCs. So. Uh, Oh yeah, I have three right now, and I know where I can get six more. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, "Be careful!" Right now. You don't want to keep, yeah, calculating appliance runtime. There we go. Battery ba bank, watt hours, oh, appliance yes. wattage, and runtime. Yeah, I do that. I have so, a spreadsheet for that. <laughs> exactly. Like 
I know it sounds like it might be overwhelming, but there are literal tools out there that can help you calculate that based on the models of stuff that you want to run and things like that. Not to like talk over this poor guy, yeah. but he is kind of giving us here. Let's go. Yeah. Cause I think we really, we should, we should show them the engineer's super stealth van that where he made his own electrical yeah. circuit. Yeah. Hold on. Somebody, and then, hold on. Sunny, somebody just commented about, uh, get a good 2,500 watt PSU on wish. Uh, that's completely, that's completely bogus. Wish has maybe some good deals, but they sell a lot of stuff that breaks. I don't know. My mom, I had to try to get my mom off of Wish. She's like in her mid 70s and she's, I feel like she's been bamboozled a little bit by Wish. Back, back, back when 32 gigabyte uh, uh, so memory cards were 50 bucks, they sold a 512 yes. gigabyte for $10 and it turns out it was corrupted. Uh, it, Ooh. You, you would store things yeah, that would overlay, I, it would overlay other things you'd previously stored it's worthless epic glitching it's so weird that there's epic glitching for you guys because it's just not glitching on our end and it doesn't look like it at all so I don't know what's happening we're using a um, we're using a program called Restream um, because I really hate the fact that a lot of these different platforms are asking for exclusivity. So I'm actively declining all of their affiliate partnership programs and whatnot. Yeah, Restream worked um, before, so I don't know. Yeah, sorry guys. I don't know. I don't know. But I think uh, so. It looks like he has a backup battery solution. It seems like, yeah. um, and so he's that's a tat or that's messing with his alternator on his vehicle. Mm. Um, so that makes sense. It's cool. So like you could have a backup, you can have a battery, uh, they, the YouTube is scuffed. Well, you always, <laughs> you always have to have two batteries. One for, you don't want to be stuck without being able to fire up the engine. So, and then the linkage yeah. between well, let's cover is, is tricky, but. Yeah, I feel like we should have covered something. We should have covered the internet like a while back because that's probably when people's deterministic, like, I don't want this because no internet. Do I get internet inside of my van yeah. in such remote places? Well, my friends, I wish I had the perfect solution for you, but I truly don't. It's Aww. 2021 and the technology honestly isn't quite there yet. However, I am able to game online off grid for the most part. And here's how I do it. Essentially, I have two Verizon hotspots and each of those <laughs> Verizon hotspots have unlimited data. And if you know Verizon, you know their unlimited data plan isn't really unlimited. After about 30 gigs <laughs> of their unlimited data plan, they start throttling your speeds to a very painful amount. And for me, after gaming for about two weeks on my monthly plan, I usually run out of my data plan plan and they start throttling my speeds. However, for whatever reason, I'm able to play World of Warcraft and watch Netflix just fine. <laughs> so I'm good. <laughs> okay. Or um, I feel like he's I when you run out of one, you switch to the other. <laughs> yeah, I feel like he's gonna tell us <laughs> please, we're gonna sit on either side of you while you tell us your struggles and tell us how you fixed your internet. Well, he did say he had two um, spots, so yeah, I mean, you can and you can sign up for like those free, you know, additional phone lines that and then uh -huh. use that as a hotspot, mm -hmm. which I know somebody who's done that. Yes. Um, yeah, I have four hotspots, even when Just they throttle my speeds. Now, if that Internet solution isn't enough for you, there is an alternative. I have a few van friends that use a cell provider called Visible, and apparently this cell provider has true unlimited data. Mm. And the best OK, so it is interesting when he talks about true unlimited data, because like they do say that it's unlimited. And then there's like an asterisk for most carriers that are like unlimited asterisk being up until X amount of gigabytes. Have you have you encountered that with your RV life? I was gonna say like, if anybody wants to go in on Starlink with me, exactly, exactly, yeah. Starlink. Yeah, I was like, do we know? I don't know if we need to talk about this because maybe Starlight would, or would Starlink's like gonna to be learn more. So, uh, Maxim, yeah. uh, if you've done yep. some research into it. I'd like to hear more, maybe uh, after this is done or something. I'm looking Perfect. Into it myself, yeah. So. Yeah. So we don't have tons of time left, but do we want to touch on the engineer working remotely in a four by four 
or the engineer's stealth camper van van conversion. Uh, let's just it go with the person working because the stealth, because you he's probably going to be talking about stealth and it's like, yeah, we already talked about that. This is pretty long, but this is like the OG. Mm -hmm. um, this is the OG. In fact, if you look at the comments, I don't know why I'm so, there we go. If you look at the comments, it's like, I am the current owner of Dave's for, former 2008 Sprinter. I, and then basically it's like a review on how awesome he is. So I think we should dig into this real quick. And then we want to talk about why we chose GMC through the voice of a, a guy who really described it very well. Remember when, last night when we saw his description I'm... of the GMC and why it was cool? Watch. Based on yeah, I, the axle position. Oh, yes, that's right. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Here we go. I love the interior of his van. It's a bit of a fire hazard. Yeah, it was. It's like it's like um, Tinder. It's weird. I'm saying kindling and Tinder, and I'm like, I don't even think of it as wood anymore. I don't think of it as, <laughs> the, as the app. The exterior has virtually nothing that it shows. There's no electrical outlet. There's no water hookups. So this is, no is the engineer working one? Because it's yep. also stealth. It needed to be yep. able to be converted into a cargo van as we'll get well there. so that I could haul stuff because I sold my pickup years ago. Aww. So either side there's nothing showing and the only thing we have we have a solar panel up on oh, the roof. Wow. But I specifically built it so that the supports weren't visual so when you're down here you can't see anything. So we got a, a roof vent and a 300 watt solar panel yeah, on the top. I agree. Things Beautiful. Like, uh, gray tank. Gray tank is underneath the van to drain it. You just reach down. There's a hose that comes down with a plug in it. That's so a that's really short underneath. van. Then on the other side of the van, there's a uh, electrical a shore power yeah, hook up. Camera. It's just a regular three prong 15 amp That's cord cool. and it just hooks up. It's worth to note that this is his traveling van. He doesn't live out of this. Typically, I don't have anything oh, okay. on the outside of the van. Because you'll really see sold. if we get to the point where it's a shower, that, you'll be like, it uh, so short. I don't know. yeah, it is short. The major pieces we got a cabinet here it's on the front. It, it has a cover. Respect. Respect. Trying to get to like his electric. Yeah, see, this is why people. And to conserve water. So here we go. That's where the water spread splays out. So you take. So it's like a shower and bathroom you. combo, but it's pretty normal and acceptable. I would feel like if you're not living at out of it twenty four seven. Yeah. Um, somebody said, looking at getting mobile and not looking at getting going stealth, and I agree. Yeah. Um, stealth can be handy, but it is a subset of the whole point of uh, going mobile. So um, I think it really does depend on where you're coming from. A lot of, you know, a lot of States, you know, say you're just going to be traveling mostly around one region. Maybe you're not going to hit all of the States. I think you might not have to worry about it. And you can also go to just like really inexpensive, uh, like, can you list some of the resources? I think hip camp is one of them. Hip camp, um, there's um, just boondockers. Welcome. Yeah. Uh, I've used them. Um, something about not Heartland. Oh, Harvest Host. But they they actually joined up with. Uh, they merged with Boondockers. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Boondockers Welcome is awesome. Uh, it's usually ten dollars a night donation. Sometimes they don't even really require that. Some are a little bit more, but it's very reasonable. Wow. So <laughs> when an electrical engineer like gets their hands on stuff, you can really tell. I feel like. The weather conditions. Here we go. And it's propane? It's propane. The cylinders are in here. That's propane and bottle. propane it's accessories. Refillable. Did you consider other technologies? Like so apparently, like, we're still glitching. I don't know how because we just don't see that in our view. I'm going to, I'm having issue with my main desktop, and I never had a problem with that. I used OBS. I'm using Restream right now. I'm sad that it's glitching for you guys. I don't hear anybody saying that it's glitching on, um, like, you're on um, on Twitch. But yeah, well, here here it is off yeah, of. Yeah, if you use induction or electrical, you end up requiring a lot bigger electrical system to power it. I have two thousand watt inverters, and the thousand Harvest watt hose, won't yep. run an induction stove. But one of the things that I decided early on was to 
have the sink on in this location so when you're working at the sink and using the sink you can look out and see the the world with the slider door open to fill the fresh water oh, tank there's a pvc pipe with a plug in it this is an old-fashioned radiator fill hose, which has a valve on it. So when you go to fill the freshwater tank, you don't get water everywhere. And I use the same valve from the water pump. It's a little solar water pump. It's not a normal RV water pump because they're huge and noisy. This one's very small and quiet, but the water comes out of this pump mm. and goes over wow. and up to the sink faucet. Wow. Epic lag, huh? <laughs> Yeah, I saw a screenshot of what it looks like. Oops, you can't see because, um, wow, I'm sorry about that, you guys. It just doesn't look like that. We're going to talk to the people who we run this service through and see what happened. But look, like this is the. Well, as long as we're not lagging, it it's like. just the video where the sound is lagging. Is that uh, No, oh. look. We look like a Technicolor dreamland. <laughs> Mm. We're not laggy. The video is laggy, but wow. <laughs> so, okay. You know what? We don't really even have to listen to what they say. No, it's not. No. It's not. Sorry, you guys, but I hope you are still enjoying this, even the little bits that you can see. And I thank you for putting up with that. It's been cyberpunk AF. Well, it's like, here's a, <laughs> this isn't going to be the only, we're definitely going to do a part two. And then we're going to do more of a tour of what we're working on. So there's still plenty of stuff to look at once we get figure the, out. the chief yeah. figured out. Oh, wow. <laughs> I see the Technicolor thing. That's crazy. Yeah. You see it? That's crazy. Yeah. It is insane. Yeah. I mean, it, there's a part of me that I'm like, okay, this this particular error is kind of beautiful, <laughs> but also you don't really want this to be live. Um, so why don't we just go through um, the last video and head over to Discord. I'm already in there. Um, we have a little bit of an agenda of like some questions that we wanted to ask for our discussion group about open sourceness, self-reliance, being a digital nomad, RV hacking, um, you know. So let's see here. Uh, Let's let's look at this last video. Um, and this is actually about, so you guys are curious about why we chose the GMC. I want you to look at how cute this is. Okay. Here we go. Please work. Please. It was like people ask where how I'm transcoding. I'm like, I'm just doing it through the app. Yeah, it's an it's an issue through YouTube playback. Yeah, I'm, next time I can download all the videos and have them ready for you if you want. But um, so I'm gonna show the GMC motorhome so you kind of understand why it's cool from a technical mm, perspective. Yes. Um, and then we can dive in more on Discord, which I'm also going to continue streaming and we'll see if that's like an internal nightmare because um, I'm going to stream the Discord also on here. I want to add one so, thing before you start. Uh, the GMC yeah. drives really nicely. Uh, and then I got the other RV, which is a big old box, basically. And it drives like a truck. And so keep that in from, mind. From is, Breaking Bad, you yeah. have the GMC yes. from Stripes yes. and the GMC yes. from Breaking Bad. Yep. Uh, so when you, he shows the description here, that's why, or that's the result of what he describes here is it drives so much more like a limousine than a truck. Mm -hmm. I'll turn subtitles on for you guys. Hopefully that doesn't screw it up. It could be that I'm using Brave. I don't know. It could be, who knows? How about that? Let's just try this little guy. Maybe we'll try it from a, like, something like this perspective okay but See they are rear okay. wheel drive this means that you need a drive right. shaft uh that transverses the entire wheelbase so this here we I go i bought a motorhome this is a 1978 gmc motorhome <laughs> it occurs to me that you guys probably don't know what makes this motorhome so special to explain that, I need to talk about rear wheel drive. Because of mechanical considerations, the vast majority of trucks are built like this with the engine up front, but they are rear wheel drive. This means that you need a drive shaft uh, that transverses the entire wheelbase. 
When you want to build a frame on top of your wheels, you have to build it above the drive shaft. So this mm -hmm. is the way that truck chassis are constructed. To this day, motorhomes, also known as RVs, are built on top of truck chassis, which are purchased from major automobile manufacturers. A motorhome is basically a box built on top of this frame. So you can see yep. why motorhomes... That kind of blew my mind and it makes total sense. Like a motorhome is built on top of a truck frame. Yep. Okay. That makes sense. Though a lot of people that have huge motorhomes still don't need their commercial driver license, but we can talk about that more later. <laughs> Depends on the size. Sit so high up off the ground. Also, with the solid rear truck axle, yeah. they ride like a two by four on a golf ball. Now, back in the early 1970s, GMC decided to design an RV from scratch. They put together an all-star team of engineers from the Cadillac line, along with designers from the Corvette line. Hey and for guys, good measure, they threw in an aircraft engineer or two. The major driving principle behind this project was to make a front-wheel hey drive motorhome. The lack of a drive shaft meant that they could lower the frame way down, which brought the center of gravity down as well, making the rig handle much better than a normal RV. Then they got the brilliant idea to put the tandem rear wheels front to back instead of the typical side-by-side -side arrangement. This allowed each rear wheel to be independently suspended, like this. The resulting ride of the vehicle is much nicer, but this arrangement also gives... That looks so funny, but it really does it, make it work. It just looks... Yeah, it just is so clear. It just makes it so clear how different it is. Yeah. You're not... Your entire frame... I feel like if I can find it again... Could lower the frame way down, yeah. which brought the center of gravity down as well, it's also making the rig handle much better than a normal RV. Yep. Then they got the brilliant idea to put the tandem rear wheels front to back instead of the typical side-by-side -side arrangement. This allowed each rear wheel I to be independently it. suspended, like this. The resulting ride of the vehicle is much nicer, so cool. but this arrangement also gives more distance in between the wheels, which translates as more living space inside the RV. Speaking of living space, it's not a box, it's a tube, like a passenger yeah. jet with all aluminum and fiberglass construction for massive weight savings and increased aerodynamics. Yeah. They made these things from 1973 to 1978. That's it. A few yeah. other smaller companies copied the concept like Revcon and Airstream, but they just weren't as elegant because to this day, GMC is the only major auto manufacturer to put all of their efforts into making the best RV possible from the ground up. Yeah, I was talking with- uh, Unless Tesla uh, starts making with, RVs, uh, we aren't going to see- That said the aerodynamics on, the, uh, on this, the GMC is actually rivals that of like a Corvette which is like yeah point, because they use the corvette like point two seven or something it's hard to believe i mean that that would make sense because they made the corvette um they had corvette engineers and jet engineers mm -hmm. working on the design yep yeah. but rv possible from the ground up unless tesla starts making rvs we aren't going to see oh <laughs> look at that topical yeah, relevance home, which is anything close to being this cool anytime soon okay so with that being said, we're going to get rid of this dreaded, we'll bring it back. When Tesla start making RVs, it looks like you're on top of a Tesla RV. What is that? Wow. <laughs> okay, cool. So we are, are um, yeah, so, so that kind of brings us to Buttercup, which yep. apparently started randomly playing. <laughs> um, but this is, I want to try to pull up one of your videos because opti is just now starting his um his instagram if i can grab it and here it is i'm afraid to play anything now but here it is you can test to see where the the screen. Magazine yeah. from. we love typical doing engineer. tests live typical engineer success yeah. it failed so yeah that's what we feel about science but yep you can explain over this since we can't right. use the sound so it's just showing how i'm getting started putting together a uh, lithium iron phosphate battery pack a two kilowatt hour is what i'm starting with um and i figure that two kilowatt hours should push it about two miles down the road if i'm lucky maybe a little bit less maybe a little more and uh what i my first goal is to go 10 miles down the road on pure batteries so we'll see yep. what happens. I've got three of these RVs. One of them has a bad engine. So I'm going to pull the engine out of that and uh, put in some kind of electric motor thing. Um, actually, that's not the first step. 
the first step, I will hope to get a hub motor and put on one of those tandem wheels, or two of them, and see if I can just have an electric assist. Uh, then the next step will be just replace the engine in, in one of the other RVs and see if I can go full yeah. electric. And we can we can cover all that. And so that kind of um, brings us into me also, since that video was also pixelated, I'm just going to um, display this one video and hopefully it'll allow some people to get some time to join the Discord. It's um, for those of you who are looking for the Discord, it's Discord gg slash geek beacon i realize that some of you guys are in the middle of your work day so if you do join we would love to hear your input um we chose this time mainly because uh we realized that it was really hard for a lot of the eu people uk people to join <laughs> when we're doing it like 3 a.m your time yes. so we're very grateful that 40 of you have stuck around through all the pixelated goodness. I am Nixie Pixel after all. Um, and yeah, let's play this video real quick. And then um, I'm gonna try to display the Discord. There should be a text um, channel on Discord for you guys. So for those of you who don't wanna talk or be in the stage, oh wow, yeah, we're, <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of the screenshots of, of how, of Nixie Pixelated. Oh my God, that's <laughs> insane. That is insane. It's beautiful almost. Like I, I kind of want to make a t-shirt out of this. <laughs> That's like ridiculous. We look good though. We're fine. Of course we are. It looks like an impressionist um, painting. <laughs> yeah. I just wish I could screen share it. Um, yeah. So there should be a Bitsy Homes brainstorming. So it's going to be a stage. Um, I'm going to join that right now. Um, and then what I'll do is. I will, I think when people raise their hand, I can unmute it and then I'm going to start. Um, we're going to go through, we'll just, we'll just figure it out as we go, but let's get you guys some time to join the discord. And now we're shifting from the reaction video side to the discord thing. And I am going to attempt to actually um, screen share this discord. So we'll see um, how that works out. We might have to mute ourselves on restream though. So I don't know if that... If we mute ourselves on restream, that wouldn't go through, or would it? If it compiles, we can ship it. Um, so, yeah, when you get a chance, Opti, while the video is playing, mm -hmm. join our Bitsy Homes brainstorming. Mm -hmm. And we are actually, it's Bitsy Homes like Leet Speak. Um, but I don't want to change it now. Um, that was kind of our thought around um, Bitsy Homes and whatnot. So. Cool. There's a, there's a few people joining Discord. So when you get a chance, um, maybe we have an actual direct link to the event itself. That would be cool. Um, when you join the Discord, there's a section that says events, and there should be an actual, um, yep, there's an actual link for that. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy that for you guys and post it in here um, to join the discussion group. And if you want to type um, there will be a channel, I hope, for Bitsy Homes for you guys to be able to type. If there isn't a channel there, um, I'll just check voice chat because I realize not everybody loves um, being verbal, and that's okay. Um, so this exact Discord event. Awesome. Boom. So I posted that on all of the stream locations. It says... Select members can view this channel. I don't know why. Um, we're going to have to fix that. Mons, help us. Microphone access is denied. Um, now, mine just says listen I'll in. Figure is, it that, out. is that what it's supposed to do? You need to um, probably ask to be a speaker of some kind. Okay. Nope, there you are. Um, I think I can make you a speaker. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're in the Bitsy Homes brainstorming. I don't know what the permissioning is on here. Um, let's see. Let's do this while do you guys can listen to this while I figure it out. Okay. So, yeah. So, we ended up because of the love of... You can kind of discuss what you were in... What drew you into the GMCs. But I just love how it's like the Tesla. Basically, unless Tesla makes RVs, the GMC is yes. where it's at now and turning them into the tech mo mobiles, the geek beacon mobiles is hundred percent what we're into. Oh, you're in there now. I, let's see. I better mute me. 
repeat myself over there unless or do you want me to say it there too um okay so you were just saying about how um until the tesla builds an rv this is mm -hmm. the, the closest thing you can get to it and i love how you put the pictures next to each other because it just shows that they are aerodynamic and have kind of a similar uh, plan form yep. so uh I am on the list for the Tesla Cybertruck. Hey guys, I want to. <laughs> I hey guys, can't pause I it. To Why does it not let me pause it? <laughs> it just doesn't let me pause hey guys, it anymore. I wanted to introduce you to Buttercup, also known as the. But look at those windows. Those are huge windows. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, so I am on the list for the Cybertruck, and the Cybertruck does have a thing you can go camping in it, but it still isn't an RV. What I really want to do is come up with a plan on how to buy a Tesla Semi to, you know, you can make money, uh, start a over the road trucking company or something using Tesla Semis. Um, I mean, they're already making them and Amazon's buying tons of them, but I want to take one and convert it into an RV. So we'll see because those tractor, tractor trailers, the tractor part, uh, the ones with sleepers are huge. They're in fact, some of them will take that uh, the part that the fifth wheel drops on top of and uh, put a box on it and actually have RVs of regular diesel tractors. So you could do the same thing with a, with a Tesla. So if the Tesla doesn't come up with an, actually an RV, I'll turn a truck into one someday. But in the meantime, yes, I've got exactly. the <laughs> Maybe I'll just, I just put a shell around and make it look like a Tesla. <laughs> Oh, yeah, there you go. Just like with container homes. I did want to ask you guys, um, we're experimenting with the Discord right now. I'm going to unmute myself and start talking in the Discord. So those who, of you who want to talk and speak in the Discord, um, feel free to just listen in. And um, But Torch, you will need to mute me. So make sure that you right click if you see what I'm doing and then just do mute mm -hmm. and just mute me on your side so you don't hear me twice. Oh, okay. Right, it's muted now. Yeah. So, well, when you unmute, I can. So I'm mute. unmuting myself. Okay, hello. I'm doing the thing. Let's try the stage. Why not just try something new randomly? Okay. Uh, there we go. How does that sound? <laughs> I like how Bermain, uh changed his name to Nixie Live. <laughs> <laughs> So you can't, you guys can hear me, but, um, okay, cool. I think that works. Just let me know. You guys can hear us in the discord. It's discordception. We're figuring it out. Um, because the only way that we can really know if you're, if you want to talk is if you raise your hand and I can just check out the requests. Yeah. So nobody, um, allow requests from everyone. I assume. Okay. I can allow requests. Um, okay, cool. So I think that's working out. Um, just do let us know, uh, wh where are we doing the chat? Where are we looking at the chat? There should be a Bitsy Homes brainstorming chat. Um, I'm going to look in the voice chat right now. Muted the streams elsewhere and have multiple of us playing. Wow. Yeah, that's insane. You guys look at this. <laughs> Lovely. That's your Instagram. So hey, wow. um, yeah, we're gonna have to have a conversation with the people that we we have paid to do the restream. <laughs> um, but I did want kind of want to test having somebody else speak and see if it comes through well or if the, have that work. I wonder if the recording will be terrible. We'll see. Yeah, you know, I really hope the recording isn't terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I also have a Trello going um, and some notes and things like that. We also got, did you want to go through the questions while um, sure. I prepare some stuff? There's some Q&As from uh, social media, which was really yeah. cool. One of the reasons we're doing this to begin with, um, actually, here, how about this? I can just show my um, Facebook because that was one of the reasons why we even decided to do this was uh, it was, we'll do Twitter first. Um, I'm going to turn this I've got off the, for a second. I've got your, all the comments queued up here. So. 
Yeah. So I did want to kind of show you guys real quick. Um, let's see here. Yeah. On my Twitter, one of the reasons I even decided to do this was that one year ago, I was like, oh, you know, I'd really love, um, oh, I have to actually push it live again. I was like, I'd really love, it's been my lifelong dream to retrofit a, a motor home. And then I said, so far an RMC, AKA GMC, a uh, motor home is looking great for this, like the EM50 urban, um, vehicle and stripes. And exactly one year later we did it. So we're, we are going to be focusing on that. Um, and, and so I'm going to just play this video and hopefully we get everybody in the discord discord, uh, discord.gg slash geek beacon. And let's watch this vid real quick. 1976 GMC motorhome, or Oops. you may have seen it on the movie stripes. Hmm. I wonder if there's hey guys. I wanted to introduce side. you to there Buttercup, also known as the 1976 GMC Motorhome. You hey can guys, hear it, I right? I wanted to introduce yep. you to Buttercup. Okay, cool. Also known as the 1976 GMC Motorhome, or you may have seen it on Yay. the movie Stripes as the urban assault vehicle. My best friend ever of 10 years came from the Midwest, as did I, to revamp one of these little bitsy homes. We're doing this as a little nod to the Geeks Abroad project, showing that not all who wander are lost, and we're doing it in the form of little bitsy homes. And I will show you real quick. If you don't know Buttercup from Princess <laughs> Bride, you won't know this. I will show you. We're going to have fun storming the castle. Please follow our journey. It'll take a miracle. Yay! Okay, so I'm gonna um, post, I'm gonna get the, let's see, do you wanna start f over on the, do you remember we have our little uh, brainstorming, for the brainstorming, tiny home living isn't just for everyone. Sure. We, made, we made notes for you sure. guys because we love you. Um, I'm going to work on the troubleshooting of voice. There we go. Yeah, well, actually, what we, if you want me to get started now, or I can wait a little bit. Um, no, by all okay. means. So actually, what we just, the, those reaction videos we did, I think illustrates what I was going to start with. And that is that tiny home living isn't for everyone necessarily. And, but those that are, there's as many different reasons for living in a tiny home, whether it's on the road or in a, you know, stable location. Either way, there's as many reasons to choose that as there are people, basically. Like that first guy, he was, uh, he just wanted to get started and he's got everything that he needs for his drones and such. And then the other guy who was working in yep. it, um, he wasn't worried about living in it, but he wanted to work in it. And then uh, there's other ones where people, you know, do everything and it's have live and work and, and uh, some people need stealth and some people don't. So, what we wanted to do with this town hall is really go to the people directly that have any interest, or maybe they don't even know about tiny homes. They don't even know if they're interested or not, what appeals to them and what maybe doesn't, or, you know, different people might have different ideas or might have some mistaken assumptions about it and just educate. Cause that's, that's my tagline. I, I uh, live to learn and love to teach. So, uh, if you can, you know, if you can benefit from learning more about it and decide what it is you like about it, what you don't like about it, we'd love to hear it too, because we want to give um, more feedback to anybody who's interested in, in the areas that they are particularly keen to learn more about, tiny homes. Um, so the ones we saw were tiny homes on wheels, what I call tiny homes on wheels. Um, my interest for, started off, I think I started mentioning it, but I'll... Just go through it real quick. When I had a gaming center, yeah, I did mention it, uh, but this is a new, like, a new group. So when I started with the gaming center, uh, I wanted to be able to have more computer stations. So that was sort of a, a hacker RV or hacker van uh, that I could have like another 10 or 15 workstations where I could expand for a LAN party event. I could have 20 or 30 inside and another 10 or 20 outside. And also, um, carry my own equipment uh, when I need to go on site and do some installation, like 
install a big networking system in a uh, at a at an event like a festival or a or a, a county fair. Uh, be able to tar- carry all my equipment with me and all my tools and all my uh, test- testing um, everything and monitoring systems, kind of like what I have right now, except I have to gut it, so I have to take everything out uh, that was in there, and then uh, eventually I'll build it back up with a rack, server rack and everything. Um, So that's for Tiny Home on Wheels. But at the same time, uh, I also want to explore the idea of going off-grid. Now, obviously, when you're going down the road, you're you're off-grid. But even when you're in one place, I don't want to depend on the power company to give me power or the water company to give me water or um, the grocery store to give me groceries. You know, I want to be able to provide for myself. I want to be self-reliant. I want to be self-contained. And and just, you know, for one thing, it makes it more affordable for some people that um, uh, I lived in. some kind of, you know, different kinds of economically depressed areas. I grew up on a farm, so I'm pretty isolated there. You have to do everything yourself and be able to provide for yourself. And so I kind of like that ability. But at the same time, as uh, Nixie said earlier, um, yeah, we want to be able to, we, we want to be off grid, but we want to make our own grid. Uh, we want to, uh, and we certainly want the tech so we can stay connected. We want to be be able to be self-contained, but you also want to stay connected with the larger community. And so that's really why we're also looking at the tiny homes that don't, uh, aren't necessarily on the road. Uh, and then there's more things you can do there. Like you can uh, build a greenhouse and grow your own food, uh, or you can have a larger uh, power source, either solar or wind, that would be, uh, you can't do large sources of power when you're on the road but you can when you're in one location. So uh, that's what that's what I'm interested in doing now. So I haven't gotten into wind turbines that much. Solar is more my thing, but uh, I want to look into wind turbines also. Uh, that'd be more of a community level. So one of the things we're looking at is something that um, if you get a collection, a community of tiny homes together, maybe you can put up a single wind turbine that'll serve all of them. Uh, so that'd be sort of like a community of self-reliance. Um, anything that uh, you'd like to chime in on? I really like the, I mean, I've been talking about open source communities for a really long time. Um, and I, I think that it's really important, especially coming out of being isolated for so long, just to just to essentially create a cooperative community um, and not necessarily a bunch of hippies, if you will, because I don't want the mind to immediately go there, but maybe techno hippies. Uh, So one of the things that we were going to do around a month from now, if not a little bit longer, we were going to go to a few of these eco villages. So we did have questions for the audience and thank you guys for joining here on the discord uh, as far as, um, you know, what motivated you. Um, and I think I'll have, if you don't mind, while I'm trying to figure out how to screen share Torch, if you want to drive that document that we have, I'm going to okay. um, screen share the Discord itself for the people here um, in the multiple streams so they can see. If they don't feel like downloading Discord, I don't want to like um, make them have to download Discord. <laughs> So, um, though it is something that you can use, by the way, Discord is available on. Um, uh, it's just, you know, on, on a browser base. So don't worry about that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, building on what I was just saying, just continuing on there, uh, talking about tiny homes or tiny home community. Um, so I'm definitely uh, committed to doing more things with tiny homes on wheels and RVers, and also, uh, actually. I'll, I'll digress briefly that uh, as an electrical engineer, I have designed and invented various hardware products that are used for troubleshooting computers, um, PCs from years ago. And what I want to do is I want to build some products that help troubleshoot RVers because I'll give just one example. Uh, Especially anybody who does solar power, you want to know how much solar you're uh, producing and how much, or sorry, 
how much electricity you're using and how much electricity you are producing. And there's a product that you can buy on like on Amazon or whatever that's called the kilowatt and it's $15 and it can keep track of the kilowatt hours that go through it. You just plug it into an outlet and you plug something into it and it monitors the voltage, the current, tells you if it's overloaded, tells you if it's, you know, a lot of those things, uh, uh, it actually monitors a trend line. It, you get the history. You can tap into it with your phone through Bluetooth and actually see how much power you've used over the last 24 hours. It only costs $15. That's great. And they have the same thing for our viewers, but it costs $350 because, well, I don't know why. I guess nobody, I don't know. <laughs> But I want to do something a lot cheaper. I want to do something that's more accessible to the average RVer so that they can, if they want to go solar, and they need to be educated too, because a lot of people don't even know they can go solar. They don't know that on an RV, you can have 2,000 watts of solar being collected, and that could run everything you need. It could even, it can run your refrigerator. It could even run a cooktop, although you need a bunch of batteries to do that. But you could collect enough. Uh, power from the sun to get rid of your propane completely, if you want to, which is something I want to do. So that's what I'm going to be working on doing. So that's that's a digression. Sorry for digressing, but I do that because, you know, squirrel. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, the uh, so making a product like that, I I need to have a base of operations where I can really experiment with things and uh, develop products. And so that's why I want to also, in addition to RVing or uh, tiny homes on wheels, I want to do a tiny home in the forest. <laughs> tiny homes on wheels, tiny homes in, in the forest. Um, and other people that uh, know other things, um, like gardening, you know, if, you're, if you've got uh, a tiny home, oh, that's the other thing, uh, different building methods. Uh, I know somebody who's really into container homes. I really want to learn more about that because it'd be that's kind of like halfway in between stationary and mobile is you can set it up on a foundation, uh, a container home, like these containers that they ship across, you know, everything comes from China or whatever on ships uh, and they can come on rail cars and on trucks, uh, to containers that are 40 foot long, eight foot wide, eight, uh, nine feet tall. And uh, you can turn those into a house, but it feels a little cramped for my purposes. But if you put two of them together, it could make a very nice home. Uh, and still, you could, you know, transport it like you have in one location on a foundation and be stable for months or years or whatever. And then maybe you'd want to, at some point in time, disconnect it from the foundation and have it picked up on a truck and ship it to another country and set it up there. So it's not exactly mm -hmm. tiny homes on wheels, but it kind of gives you the ability to move if you want and to set up shop anywhere in the world. Um, and yes. hey, there you go, geeks abroad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wouldn't that be um, cool to have your own home set up in a container and you just like pick it up and move it and you still got your home and you could be anywhere else in the world? That'd be cool. And that would be awesome. Um, I think I finally figured it out, uh, but we lost, I think, half people. And there was somebody that had been requesting to speak, so I don't know. Oh. Um, it looks like they're go they've are they gone into general. I think I might want to try to do that because it's not really easy to figure this out last minute um, on how to enable people. So if you're actually looking to speak, there should be a section where you could raise your hand. However, there's no way to actually display. Um, yeah, there's no way to actually display anything else. <laughs> um, for whatever reason, they don't have uh, video enabled. So yeah, if you'd like to request your, um, but go ahead and, and go uh, through the Bishop, the initial question. Bishop has their hand yeah, raised. Yeah, that's great. So, um, so yeah, uh, you have a agenda, Opti. So, um, hopefully, you can see, but I have to. I actually can't look at it. 
But I think that the initial, the initial, okay, now that you know, um, you know, kind of what our desires are and what we value, um, you know, what are some of yours and what do you like? And I think if I recall, Bishop actually, um, yes. one of the things, yeah, <laughs> actually has experienced this life. And I think it would be really interesting to talk about it. So. Okay. Hey, hey. Here he is. Hello. Hello. Cool. Um, welcome. I'm, I'm just give you a uh, welcome. That's um, it's a pleasure to meet you. Um, Yay! I, I, uh, <laughs> I'll just give you a bit of background about myself. I'm from Australia, so uh, I have only done a little bit of camping, but most of it was when I was um, younger. And um, Very cool. to be fair, um, when we were camping we didn't have the technology that's available today right so yeah <laughs> we used uh things like generators for electricity um and um they're very annoying and annoying <clears throat> and make smoke and yeah yeah definitely <laughs> so um but one thing i do remember is when i was six weeks out into the desert um it was up at Exmouth. um you need a, a good supply of water if you're in the middle of nowhere. Um, water is like number one. Um, a lot of other stuff kind of comes secondary. Food is also important. Um, but yeah, it depends on the level of extreme of isolation. And I know that with NASA, that's one of their specialties, obviously, because when you're up in, in, up in space, obviously, you're not going to have access to anything. <laughs> so um, you have to be very efficient with any little bit of resource you have available. Um, True. Yeah. I, I also was in a, in a, working for a company called Fugro Airborne. Um, oh. I'm not sure how much I can talk about that, but we <laughs> had um, access to a satellite dish to get internet in the middle of the desert. So um, what we would do is set that up and have like a VPN to go um, communicate with the outside world. The good thing about that is you, st you, you have internet that is really, really good. It depends a lot on the weather because the weather obviously affects um, communications. But the amazing thing about the satellite dish is you feel like you're at home even though you're in the middle of nowhere. So, because you still feel connected to the to the rest of the world, and it, that's important. Yeah, it's interesting how many people say, like, that's their primary concern as far as like even going mobile or going geek mobiles. Like, how do I internet? Um, I'm just gonna do a little still here because I forgot to even put this on social media. So, if you want to do the llama face, uh, Opti, throw up the llama loves Let's you see. sign real quick pose <laughs> it's just a yeah that's a oh. there we go llama loves you people who aren't watching the stream are like that's weird <laughs> sorry about the stream delay by the way but yeah so yeah tell uh, as far as that connection yeah um what did you notice even with satellite like it's gotten a lot better i assume well, the being with Fugro was kind of a luxury because satellite internet, uh, I think it was in 2007 when I was in Fugro, the satellite connection was very expensive. I, right. I'm not too sure how good Elon Musk's satellite <laughs> internet is, but apparently it's amazing. So uh, I can imagine, as I said, the technology has improved dramatically since um, I've been kind of in the game, so to speak. But, uh, and, and, you know, this kind of stuff is important because mobility, um, that is your goal, right? It's mobility. You want to be able to go wherever you want mm -hmm. and, and kind of live a normal life as if you are at home in a, uh, yeah. that is your home basically. So, exactly. um, so yeah, so if, if you have the other, the other issue is if you're not too comfortable with being in confined spaces, um, the thing with these motorhomes are obviously is they don't have the like, I mean, I know that when you're outside, that's different. But if you're inside the motorhome, um, it, it's different. It's not quite the same as if, if you're OK with that. That's not a problem, obviously. But some people, they might be, uh, you know. <laughs> if you're from a security standpoint or. No, I think some people just don't like being in, in, encapsulated. Yeah. In, in uh, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. And I think one of the things we mentioned was making the, as much of the outside, if you can, within reason, I, I, I think I, one of the people that we had reacted to was in like death Valley or something. So I was like, that's an interesting challenge. I don't know how much of dust storms you want to let into your environment, but <laughs> yeah, um, having that um, outside that, in, in feeling, so you don't feel extremely true. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So like, just, I I remember yeah. in the desert it was there was so much dust and this little this dust is like red fine powder and <laughs> it just gets into everything. Yep. it's so frustrating, including and, and like your you lungs. Can't wash it out. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't wash it out. Yeah, including your lungs. I bet. <laughs> yeah, you you started off by talking yeah. about how important water is, and uh, I have heard I have my doubts, my, my skeptic side of me, I need to check it out more, but uh, a company that can actually extract water from the air. Now, obviously in a desert, oh. it's going to be much harder because the humidity is much lower, but uh, they said they can do it in pretty low humidity, like I think down to 20% humidity or so. So I'm checking into it. I have my doubts, but I'm, I'm checking into it. Yeah, and of course, and there's yeah. the life straw company, also some... which can take any stream or yeah. anything that oh, right. have crappy water and filter it to make it drinkable. I don't think it filters it that great, though, right? I or is it like I was super? Told it, it can take the urine and you can drink it. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah I was going to mention that. <laughs> there you go. But, um, I'm suspicious about it too because you know a lot of these. No, and products are marketed to sound like miracle devices when I'm right just gadgets adequate and some people can <laughs> pay an insane amount of money for their builds I think one of the things that we really wanted to illustrate that it was like you know being being accessible so when you first started out do you mind kind of explaining a little bit about your journey when you first started out did you I don't know. I just think you know don't make the per perfectionism the enemy of the good or whatever we say right mm -hmm. um trying to encourage that maybe even just mentally for ourselves. <laughs> yeah. I think it depends on, on the level of goals that you set. I, I wouldn't set a goal too high. You got to start small. Right. And, and kind of within your work within your means. Yep. That's, that's the main issue. Um, trying to be, try to improvise as much as possible. I was quite impressed with some of the YouTube videos that you shared because they improvised a lot. Especially right. that um, I can't remember that the name of the the uh, particular YouTuber, but that that video where the guy was improvising all any little thing he could to and and like that DC to DC convert for example, those mm. are, those little things make all the difference. You have to you have to treat it almost like a, a competition where you're um, where you're competing with your with the environment mm. that you're in. You know. Yeah. So, um, so and and remember this this can also come down to a level of survival I guess. It was like so. cooperating with the environment, competing with the environment. I guess it depends on I mean when I first ended up in yes. Southeast Asia, I definitely felt I mean a lot of the I was like Australia has a lot of similar climate uh climate to where I was actually. Um but I felt like I was competing <laughs> when I remember being sick and not having any like when you're sick and you don't have any air conditioning, it's like a requirement yeah. to have air conditioning. I don't know why and it was just like I I think, you know, Opti doesn't have air conditioning his RV right now and it's like in it's in the 80s. Um so yeah, it definitely is probably a fine line between cooperating and competing with the environment but, for know, sure. Now that you you gave a very very good uh, example of uh, what yeah. you're saying, is it cooperative or competing? You said uh, yeah. like I have no air conditioning. When it gets into the 80s, one thing you need to know is that the best air conditioner in the world is a tree. So if you can just position yourself so you get the shade of the tree and if you can understand where the wind is coming from and you get downwind of the tree, you can actually get quite a bit of air conditioning or just look at the airflow around any kind of structures or anything around you. You might end up finding out you don't need that much air conditioning if you know how to use nature to get along with. So you're sort of competing, but you're also sort of collaborating. Yes. 
There is one problem though, if you are relying on those solar panels to generate electricity and then you park under a tree, it defeats <laughs> the purpose. Well, there's always <laughs> so, trade-offs. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, one one of one thing that I uh, didn't see on any of these vehicles was the um, like an extension to the vehicle. So some in Australia, what people do is they they make like a like a tarp or a tent, and it just it's like uh, you know those um, those those things in um, class where they pull out the um, the like a sheet so that you can watch a presentation. Um, Mm -hmm. what they call them those projectors oh, uh, yeah sheets. projectors are it's, you're talking like a canopy or something yeah exactly you have like a canopy and that can actually help a hell of a lot because you can give yourself a shaded spot to sit under and still be kind of outside and yes. then you're not really stuck that's right and a, a lot of vehicles in australia that like especially with rvs and camper vehicles they mm -hmm. do that that is extremely um it's it's compact and light it doesn't use up and you can have it on the outside of the vehicle and you can just have it bolted onto the side so that you can just pull it out and then just peg it into into situ it's it's, it's like just little things like that go a long way have you been living full time in like RV life or I noticed some no, no, people no, I, yeah I, I mentioned earlier that it was um, there was a six week holiday that I took up in Exmouth <laughs> oh okay that was, that was one of the first ones and then when I was with Fugro I was out in a place called Tropicana but um, it's now fully developed that area it's no longer kind of out in the middle of the sticks but at the time when oh. they were uh, building the place it was very isolated so so they were like okay you're now living in a van congratulations <laughs> <Not anymore>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean when i worked for a branch of the peace corps which is essentially kind of like a the u.s humanitarian effort um it you know going into a lot of the underdeveloped areas um was in the one of them was in the philippines and sabang um philippines and um like they essentially were like, we don't have a bed lined up for you yet. And so I remember just, I took like a bus, plane, trains and automobiles, like a bus and a bus. And then I walked and, and just like, I was so dead tired. And I remember just sleeping, like there's something to be said about the struggle, I guess, of when you allow yourself to be in nature enough it's like you sleep like a rock. <laughs> like I remember, so I saw some of the videos we were reacting to and I'm like, oh, that bed, does, bed doesn't look very comfortable. But it's like, if he's doing a lot just like outside of his van, he's probably just like passing out at night. How so about, it's fine. <laughs> how about that time you were in Hawaii and you slept in that camper van? Yeah, I feel like that's not a really good example just because it's just a bed in the back mm, of, a, okay. of a, what was it? Uh, Frontalia, is that right? Is that one of them? Uh, West Valley? Just like a van. Was it a West Valley? West Valley. I don't know. Frontalia. It was like, um, like Frontier. Uh, yeah. And so the cool thing about it was, is I would open up the back doors. And so I have images of me just like, you could just see the water. It's like you could back that sucker up right to the waves. And you're like, this is what makes it all worth it. <laughs> um, but it was essential. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there was that one. That was the uh, Toyota Tacoma with a pop-up tent on top of the on top of the uh, truck. Mm -hmm. So that's a different one. And then the van that I rent oh. that I rented it had a, it was just a bed in the back of a van. But I was like, we're good. <laughs> and so I I went all over Hawaii by myself that way, like that. So yeah. Um, yeah. The the van that we had was a Ford Econovan. But um, essentially, we didn't live in the van itself. Um, what we did is we had a tent that kind of attached like a canvas, just like I said before. Uh -huh. um, and um, the van uh, was more or less to transport the stuff so okay. that we could set up base in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> no, that makes um, sense. When I was with Fugro, we had to have a four-wheel drive. That was like, because in, in you know, you, when you're literally out in the middle of nowhere, you need to have the ability to drive in on like off road. And true. Uh, so we had a, I think it was a Toyota Land Cruiser and it was one of those boxy shaped ones. I think it was a, oh, I forgot the model of it, but it was a V8 twin turbo diesel. But the, the thing with that car, strangely, is that it was actually quite fuel efficient, even going off road um, because 
the, the way that they've geared the, the transmission, uh, it, it kind of, it just idles all the time. And, but one thing I wish that, you know, I could do with an in engine like that is have it run on dual fuel with LPG as a supplement to the diesel to mm. more range. Dual fuel. And, mm. Yeah. And, and, um, Opti, I, I saw that you really like the, the Tesla van. Um, <laughs> what worries me about a vehicle like that is if you go in the middle of nowhere, um, like the kind of range you need, you would need yeah. a decent amount of solar panels um, to charge the van over time. And it wouldn't be like, because as far as I'm aware, the um, charging stations are rated at over 50 kilowatts for these vehicles. And they charge about 80% within an hour, but then the last 20% is kind of like a staged charging system. So, um, but yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> the, I, uh, it, it's a numbers game basically. And you look at your power production from solar is going to limit the amount of uh, the amount of miles you can accumulate in one day, so it's like miles per day, <laughs> and the the limited space you have on the top of an RV. Now, I have also seen where kind of like what you said, where they fold out the awning, uh, right. where they actually fold out solar panels. So when you become stationary, you can actually pick up a couple more thousand watts of solar. Uh, so that's a different solution. But uh, even then, if you got 4,000 watts and if you're in the summertime and you can get six to eight hours of peak sunlight, let's say seven, uh, you know, you're still only going to get 20 miles, mm -hmm. barely 20 miles in an RV off of just the solar collected in one day. So what you'd be looking at is basically say, I'm going to go boondocking for uh, 10 days or for two weeks or something like that. And during that time, I can just be absorbing sunlight. And if every day you accumulate 20 miles, then at the end of 10 days, you can have 200 miles. Yeah. But then the next problem is, yeah, but you have to store it somewhere in batteries. And 200 miles would be, you know, basically, let's say 200 kilowatt hours. Ah, gets, that's like twice as big as the biggest Tesla at the moment. But half as big as the Tesla Semi, so, you know, or actually no, one-fifth of the, the, the Tesla Semi is yeah. going to have a megawatt-hour battery. So we'll see how that goes. It'll be pricey. So is yeah, Bishop the, still here? The, um, oh, yeah, they are. Yeah, I'm still here. I just muted myself so that if I if I was typing on a keyboard. Ah. <laughs> yeah, there's some some for those of you looking to um, know where to type, we changed it to brainstorming voice. I noticed that a lot of people have mentioned something in the voice chat, but we actually created another one called brainstorming voice. Um, and no save if you I don't know if no save is in here. We're in the Bitsy Homes. Were you guys able to find the Bitsy Homes brainstorming channel very easily? Um, it seems like it says that it's locked down, but I don't understand why. Um, we're still trying to use this stage thing, but I feel like next time we'll give up on it because it's like a bit confusing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> was it easy to find this? There we go. Are we still on video, by the way? In huh? Are we yeah, still on Respeed? Yeah, we are. Except we also had like glitchiness yeah. and stuff like that. So, you know, more glitchiness, more problems. Um, but I think one of the things I can read, I believe, hang on. Oh, we're, we need to move this to the very top. It, I'm going to go off screen for a bit. Top. That'll still be on audio. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of going through all the all the things but yeah thank you for joining us and um no we actually had like a little bit of a kind of like what have you learned by living in rv what's the best and worst that you could say about living in a van i think that's a good question well, the the worst thing is like the chance of because you remember this is australia right right snakes <laughs> scorpions 
uh, all sorts of wildlife you got to contend with. And I remember when I was up in Exmouth, um, I remember seeing a king brown snake on the beach, and like I was unaware that it was even like next to me. And I was sitting down and thinking to myself, "Oh crap, I think I'm dead." Um, <laughs> like I froze. I think I'm, I'm so dead. Move. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no! I basically, just like sat there. Dad was fishing at the time because um, I was with my dad at the time. Aww. And, and um, I remember thinking to myself, "Yep, I'm, I'm, I'm cactus. I'm going <laughs> to do." Turned around and it was gone. Like it slithered off somewhere. And I was like, I told Dad about it later, and you know, and th this is just one of a few events. Like I, I remember um, when Dad was fishing, uh, we found a blue ringed octopus. And Dad had it in the, in the bucket, and um, these things kill people yeah um and the thing is you don't even know you've been bitten because i mean like the venom um apparently some people don't well when i say bitten it's more like a barb um, <laughs> they, i like how you're just so casually talking about it yeah yeah uh because i guess it's i'm australian so <laughs> yeah <laughs> this environment, you know? i i remember like i went did, have you ever messed around with banana farms I, i'll let you finish your story but i was just really quickly i worked at a banana farm in Southeast Asia and they have oh. spiders that are literally the size of your hand. And they, oh. nobody mentioned this cause they thought it'd be funny. Haha -ha, rookie, like let her open the <laughs> banana thing. And it was, it's haunted my dreams. Like the face huggers from aliens ever since. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. That I can imagine because in Australia we have large bird spiders mm -hmm. like, that make a spider web that catches birds. Oh, jeez. Um, yeah. So, uh, but they're found down south, and those are actually venomous. Jeez. Um, uh, yeah, you just got to be aware of what to look out for, basically. When you when you know what you're looking out for, it's a bit, you you're a bit safer. Yeah, so I guess you were sitting there though, and you didn't know what to look out for, and there was a snake right there. So, like, is that yeah. was that one of the downsides you'd say? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, um, and and also I forgot to mention when we set up the the camp, uh, basically there was also a random scorpion that decided to waltz into the campsite, and I was like, oh crap, I don't know if that one was venomous or not. But I just kind of kept my distance. Yeah. There was like a random bull ant's nest nearby as well, and these things are like ants that are I don't know about four or five centimeters in size. They're massive, and they they're actually carnivorous. They eat meat. Um, like human ants, human flesh no, meat well, <laughs> they're, I, they're usually the thing with these ants is they're a little bit more intelligent than normal ants they they um they have like a personality and um they're kind of cute to be honest I, I actually like them because they're not you know how most ants they just follow the pheromones these these ants are like if you find a youtube video on them i'm oh yeah, i am going to look up a youtube video on them hang on uh yeah Oh, they, but I don't know if I can screen they, share it. <laughs> I can screen yeah, share it because I'm broadcasting the the uh, the Discord. Yeah. Sad face. What what are they called again? They're like an Australian bull ant. Um, they they have like a personality. They they um they kind of look with their eyes more than they than using their pheromone uh, little antennas or whatever. So oh, kind of when you watch them. Okay. Um, and because. <laughs> oh, I'm going to post a picture of it in the Discord. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They look like they eat meat. Yeah. They, <laughs> they look adorable um, and, yeah. They, 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 tr they can, tr like, I picked one up and one tried to bite me, but the bite is actually, like, almost harmless. But the <laughs> sting, on the other hand, holy crap. Ouch. Wow. <laughs> okay, I posted it. Yeah, just my little sting. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. So I'm inviting Stormmore in. Um, mm -hmm. They were writing in our um, in our chat, but you guys were mm -hmm. kind of talking a lot, but didn't get a chance. So it looks like they're going to try to talk on their phone and see what happens. Um, okay. Let's see here. I'll mute myself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think it's... We're just trying to figure this out. I don't know. The stage thing is something that Discord is pushing, but I don't know. It's not always easy. Um, but yeah. Okay. So I invited him in. And then let's see. 
I also had a Discord, or I, I had like a little Trello board that I, I put little, you know, things that I really like about. Have you heard of eco villages? I was wondering if you have eco villages in Australia that aren't like just hippie communes, because we have a lot of hippie communes. <laughs> in in uh, one of my friends um, has like a, a, a little holiday village, which is based off. He he designed it based off one of uh, oh. a video game. Funny enough, awesome he got the inspiration from Fallout. Um, you know, in Fallout, have you ever played Fallout Three? Yes, I'm like I'm making. I'm. I just realized I'm like doing a lot of thumbs up in the other stream that you don't maybe <laughs> don't see. Um, but yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, um, there's like um like a mission where you're in like a simulation and there's like um, houses going around a, like a circle and on the inside of the little playground. I think it's like Megaton, like the initial. That's awesome. I would love an introduction. This sounds great. Yeah. In Australia? <laughs> it's 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 not Megaton. It's um I forgot the name of the, the mission, but Oh. It's like the baseball one. It's in an old um, baseball park. Um I'll find a picture and then I'll Okay. It. It's that one where you're in that simulation. You know the uh I forgot the simulation mission. And um, basically, he got the inspiration from that. No, that's and awesome. Just, oh, wow. The, yeah. Yeah, I just put it on uh, the stream. Um, yeah, so what he did is, uh, well, their family basically decided to build a, um, like, a little holiday area. And it's actually powered with solar panels. That's, that's um, awesome. It's, all, it's very green. Because, see, the... The, the reason for this is actually more of an economic issue because in, when you're not able to connect to the grid because you're literally in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> you basically need to bring the grid with you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll, I'll find it. No, no, I'm bringing no, Torch no, back. No, no. I'm bringing Opti back this in. Is... Okay, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, because he, he just was like, I'll be right back, and then left. I was like, okay, well, we're going to move remove your webcam on stream while you're gone. <laughs> no, that's and really cool. And you are pixelated. And I am pixelated? Yeah, we're going to have to have a conversation. Well, your screen is. We're going to have to have a conversation with Restream about this because this is like, oh, wow, that is incredible. So, yeah, I don't know if you heard that, Opti, but, uh -huh. yeah, welcome. Welcome, Storm. Cool. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go. I actually desperately need water. I will be right back. Um, but we also have some like nice. questions. We I don't think we've re read a single one because we've kind of like squirreled out a little bit. Um, but you do have access to that. Your agenda that, you, you know, we spent hours making last night. Right, Opti? Yes. <laughs> of questions. That I have we have. questions right in front of me. Yes. Yeah, because um, I had asked, I had asked the question about what are some of the bad things about mobile, like about van life, and versus yeah. um, some of the good things. We definitely covered some sure. of the bad things, but I will be right back. I need water so desperately. She mentioned what are, what is the best and worst you could say about living in an RV, and you answered a few of those things. Um, then it was like, what size tiny home would you consider comfortable? And that's like to you, Bishop, or anybody else who wants to uh, join in. Yeah, I think, um, again, it, improvising is the key because if you, if you don't have the resources, um, you're kind of going to, you're only going to work within your means. Um, a lot of people in Australia will just buy a, a cheap Toyota van or, um, and they're not always that cheap. Um, and they'll just work within their budget. Um, the good thing about it, though, is that a, a lot of people, that especially people that are coming to Australia on on a holiday, will will work and travel in their van as they go around the country. Um, I know that my dad's done that, but he did it in a Land Rover, and that was a long time ago. Uh -huh. <laughs> he basically um, would move from one town to the next and uh, work in like different yeah um, farms and stuff like that like one of the videos we didn't get to like was that. actually developed in australia called the earth roamer which is like six hundred fifty thousand dollars. so it's a little extreme wow 
Yeah. And a lot of Isn't that US based thing. though? Oh, is it? I thought Earth oh. Rumor was US based from memory. Yeah. I've been doing a lot of research on this because I'm trying to gear up myself to decide to go fully mobile. Um, and things like inspiration from uh, the guys over at 24 7 four wheel drive in Australia is one of those. I mean, that was a big inspiration and in how they, they use their trucks and modify them as well. The RVs, um, there are some RVs made here, um, but I've had I've heard mixed opinions about the build quality of different RVs. So it depends very much on how much you have available. Like if you've got a lot of money, if you can spend like, say, a few hundred thousand dollars, then the more professional RVs are definitely the way to go. But yeah, they're big bickies. <laughs> Um, oh, I love how imaginative the, the, the Australian market seems to be for this sort of stuff going camping. I, you've also got some of the best beaches in the world to go camping on. Yeah, I was uh, when I saw the Earth Roamer, it reminded me, I, I thought it was the Australian one, but there's an Australian one I know that when you go into certain areas of um, some of the protected areas, you're supposed to leave minimal footprint. So there's this truck that literally everything expands and sits on a single point, like two square inches on the on the floor of, of the forest floor or whatever. And it has this elaborate, you have a whole kitchen, you have, you know, tent, and it's all made with probably titanium or something that's very, very strong. So just one point of contact is able to support the whole thing. And uh, that's what I was thinking Earth Rumor was, but uh, our Bishop or anybody else, are you familiar with what I'm talking about? It's it's actually yeah. something that pulls out from the side of the truck and then pulls out pulls out like laterally and then uh, in in one direction and then at a ninety degree angle pulls out two other directions and it's all balanced on a single point. Yep. Oh, okay, it's like a seesaw. <laughs> kind of, yeah. yeah. I don't know if I've seen that in my research. I've seen. I've seen caravans like that. I don't know if I've seen an RV that does that, but you, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I've seen trailers like that, like camper, uh, yeah. tent top trailers. Yeah. yeah, I guess that could be in the, in the out US and also. Like, anyone who wants to leave nature as undisturbed as possible, other than the wheels. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, there is one problem with vehicles i have to say um they pick up a lot of like little seeds and things um like there's a prickly bush that we have in australia which is it's, it's a nightmare i hate ah. and they they um get in the tires of the vehicle and they can easily spread from one place to the other because they just get stuck in the groove of the tire um i've got to remember the name of these things <laughs> they're, they're really nasty. Um, sorry what was that was it kudzu? Oh, uh, kudzu. Kudzu is from China. That sounds. And it was originally imported to uh, the southern United States to control erosion, which it did very well, but it had no natural enemy. And so it just spread like wildfire. <laughs> and it will actually it will actually eat into concrete. It will destroy buildings. Wow. I mean, I feel like it probably would mess up your tires pretty significantly then. <laughs> um, so one thing I wanted to touch on because we are um, wrapping up a little bit is, uh, and thank you guys for staying as late as you did, because this is a little bit over time that we had. Um, I wanted to know if in this community, if sustainable and renewable is a dirty word, or if it's, if it's exciting to you, why or why not? Um, I think Storm, if you, uh, I think you sound fine. Do you have any thoughts on sustainability? And uh, for me, um, I really like it. I it seems like it's gotten a bad rap because it kind of they use it just like they use open the term open source. It's like. Or, or like life hacks, yeah. you know, I'm sorry, you know, Karen, but wrapping your cord around your power supply is not a life hack. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I thought that was hilarious. I saw that it was like life hack and it was just like a power brick and they like wrapped their cord around it and they were like life hack. And just like... so, yeah, is sustainability a dirty word? Is renewability a dirty word? What do you think? Uh, not for me, for sure. 
Yeah, I I've always liked the idea of like sustainability. That's because in Australia we're already um, we have a lot of resources, but I actually think that in future that's going to change. Um, we we're taking it for granted, and and like yeah, time will tell. You know that basically um, the way our world is heading, we will be um, in a lot of trouble in future. Uh, if we don't change our habits soon. Yeah, I mean, if anything, we solar works really more. well. Oh, I was just saying solar would work really well in Australia with the giant ho holes in the ozone layer out there. <laughs> just direct solar, direct from the source. <laughs> yeah, well, the, um, the thing about Australia is we have a lot of sun and... I feel like we're not taking advantage of it. Yeah, um, right. It's starting to change, um, but it's kind of sad because you see these expensive homes, uh, and I'm talking about $3 million homes. Right. Do you see any solar panels on them? You know, I'm like, huh? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I would love it if, if the government had a system where the, um, the, the poorer communities had more access to renewable energy, um, like a solar um, roof program or something like that. And, and in including like a, a power wall as well, because honestly, um, mm. it would do wonders. It would help with the grid as well when, when there's power outages and it would um, help with, you know, lowering emissions into the environment. But you also have to factor in, obviously, the production of renewable. It has to be like, you know, have to see the big picture because the, the, there's always a downside to producing like mountains of lithium batteries for example those things also have to be recyclable and 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 the panels as well yeah. uh, everything has to be factored in um absolutely and even those vehicles that we were talking about earlier <laughs> yeah and that's and to your point you know at the same time it's easy to also say we need solar and electric you know but energy the cost of making energy does have to be taken into consideration as well uh that's another additional layer to it. But Storm, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, no, you're good. Okay. Um, I was going to say, I would really like it, and the areas that I've been exploring to see where the future state's going to be is wind. Because unlike solar, where you're talking electronic components that definitely need to be recycled, right. yeah. wind is almost, if you get it right the first time, you're done. Oh. The problem is they can do that at scale. They can't do it on the micro level. There are some. Oh, for like individual houses. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, the cost of an individual house under wind is far more than the cost of an individual house under under solar. Maybe if you're in like Holland and or you have like a hillside cottage or something like that, we just have our little community with little solar or little uh, wind power, you know. Little wind power. <laughs> I just think that wind is going to be a, a more sustainable option because it doesn't have some of the um, metals that are used for solar that are actually pretty bad for the environment. Right. Um, yeah, and that's fair. The batteries is another situation where, I mean, right now, solar, you have to use batteries to be able to get 24 hour supply. Yeah, that's true. Wind, you don't have that problem. You just have to have a 24 hour supply of wind. Uh, I was trying to think yeah. of what um, Bishop said. Sorry, he used a term power wall, or I'm trying to remember. It was like a battery. You mentioned power wall, which was, uh, it's a Tesla product. The power wall was one of them. Right. That's the yeah. Tesla name for a battery. Yeah. Well. It's basically um, a <clears throat> home rack of, of lithium cells, in, in, and, it ha and it contains a battery management system to monitor the, the health of, of the individual cells, and uh, like including temperature, voltage, and capacity. Well, um, the, the unit also contains like an inverter to, to create two... 40 volts or whatever voltage that um, the you know, house. Yeah. yeah, thanks for breaking that down too. That's really helpful. And the interesting thing about that is, is if you design it properly and you control the charging and discharge cycles, that uh, depending upon the chemistry, some of these uh, batteries will last for uh, not the typical 500 to 1,000 cycles, but 
3,000, 5,000, or even more. Uh, and so something like that, the lifespan is 20 years. And like solar panels, solar panels, the lifespan is given to be 20 years, but that just means when it, when it uh, goes down to 80% of its capacity, you can take those solar panels that have been on there for 20 years. You don't need to recycle them. <laughs> you just sell them to people that can't afford or you provide them to people that can't afford the brand new ones and they're good for another 20 years. Yeah, they only make 80% of their power rate in their nameplate capacity, but it's still going to be great for people that otherwise wouldn't have any power at all. So, and that mm -hmm. also brings up something yeah. else. You mentioned something about making it more affordable for people, you know, um, look at a whole different category. We don't know really how many, uh, much questions on it, but I was talking about greenhouse. I was thinking about greenhouses and it's just ridiculous because the people who can afford food the least oftentimes are in a food desert where it costs twice mm -hmm. as much for half as good food that's half as good. Mm -hmm. But if you give them seeds and a place to grow them, they're going to get better food for free or at least much lower cost. So something really needs to be thought about that. And also like community, now I'm going off on, on uh, agriculture, but community supported agriculture, how much of the food cost is in transportation? Whereas if you, if you design your, your infrastructure so that all the food comes within 200 miles of where it's consumed, you don't have that extra cost. You don't have that extra waste. So, and you know, that's energy that doesn't need to be spent. So there's a lot of things that can work together. Have they ever done yeah. studies that showed um, that? Because what you're describing to me, I don't want to say is like a regression back to pre technology, but it does. It was a little bit how people lived when they were homesteading. When, you know, you had people that, you know, you just by virtue of you weren't going to fly everywhere, you weren't going to drive everywhere. So you needed to be a fully sustained community. So what you're saying does kind of remind me that it is kind of reminiscent of that as well as like back in the day. So going one step further with the tech aspect of things, like back in the day, we rolled our own servers. We had our own mail servers. I still have my own mail server, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we hack the Gibson before we actually had all of these centralized systems like Google and Facebook and uh, Discord. Thanks, Discord. Um <laughs> You know, we had to, um, before we had to rely on that sort of thing, we relied on um, ourselves. And so I, I'm a big proponent of finding ways to get back to that cooperative community um, in a way where it's not like m making my tech community, I guess, making our tech community kind of like cringe. I love to know how to do that um, without immediately being dismissed as being a hippie, though I could, I'm cool being a techno hippie. I'm proud of that. <laughs> oh, I, I will claim that one every day. <laughs> Yay. Well, let me, let me uh, give you an example um, of some kind of a, just a peripheral thing. It'll be really short. Uh, telephone, the telephone in uh, the United States. Well, 20 years ago anyway, was landline. And the extreme amount of infrastructure that was needed for that was ridiculous. And when, when telephones arrived in, we'll say, I don't know, Somalia, we'll say Somalia, they could actually get by with a much lower cost because they didn't have, they didn't need the infrastructure because they all had cell phones. And mm. it's actually a lot lower impact on the environment to go higher the highest tech has the lowest uh -huh. impact. So it's kind of a peripheral thought, but we need to be looking for places where we can gain advantages from a tech, a high tech thing that actually helps the environment even more. But, you know, there's trade offs, of course, like Tantalum. Yeah, I think it's a, a case of. Mm -hmm. I was just going to go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. No, go ahead. I think it's just a case of understanding the difference between what we should centralize because there is plenty that we should centralize versus those things that we might have gone and centralized a little too early before realizing what the consequences <laughs> were and coming back and probably pulling those things back to being a bit more local so that you get a nice balancing act between central and 
local. Do you have a good definition of centralizing for people? I think it's helpful to explain that. I almost want to say monopolized <laughs> or ol- oligop- oligopolized. That's not a word, but I feel like, do you know what I mean? Like just exactly. providing it. Yeah. Um, it's The example in my current research and, which is kind of on point is the understanding of the difference between macro electricity and micro electricity right. generation. There is a, India is currently pushing hard on trying to go macro and having all of the sustainability, right. yeah. but then we're now having to transport electricity across the globe. And there are projects that are doing that versus the macro environment where you can power a single home and, and possibly that single home can also provide electricity to its neighbors. Right, exactly. Um, so that's the difference there. Um, and yeah, there are places where, like I know there's a project right now in the UK where they're actually generating solar power in North Africa and they're building DC power lines that, can, that are in the gigawatt scale from Africa to the UK to provide electricity that way. Right, yeah. Like, wow. Where's all that cost going to come down to? And and also, like, um, how, f- when you're talking about systemic social change, because that really is kind of like, we've gotten so centralized and so um, beholden to, honestly, just a handful of companies and institutions, at what hmm. level, like, what is it going to take? Is it going to take... That's kind of why I like the appeal of the eco villages because I really think um, maybe we can break down what an eco village is, but essentially, like um, one of the grandiose goals of what Bitsy Homes, we spell it like Bitsy as in bits and bytes. Um, and Bitsy Homes is kind of something that we're toying around with a name, and we'd love to like have you guys vote on what you think the name should be. But like, we'd love to eventually have the end game be a cottage court. Um, or just like an eco village that is like a bunch of techno hippies that have their own grid, you know, and then um, that are as decentralized as possible and self-reliant on the power of open community. But it's just like, how do you take that first step? You know, like, how do you go there? What would you do? Uh, Do you just get everybody together in like, like minds or... (laughs) You know, that's my question for you guys. Like, what? how do we take that first step, you know? Just out of curiosity, has Earthship crossed your path yet? It will when you tell me about it. He, he, he. So there's a couple of Earthships in the United States. Um, I'm, If I'm remembering lightly, what? They're both in Arizona or one's in Arizona and one's in New Mexico. Yeah. Opti has a um, little bit of background on this too. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I, yep. I was describing it. Then I realized I was muted. I muted myself. <laughs> I don't know much about it. Actually, Kevin's the one that brought it to my attention. Um, and yeah, fellow I, RV dweller. Yeah, I think the one was in Arizona that we saw and uh, you tell me, but the one that I saw was built with tires and they put, uh, mud around it or whatever yeah. and bottles glass bottles yep can you tell me more about why how that's an advantage um they were looking at sustainable building materials from an insulation standpoint so if you're using something like a rubber you're you that has natural um insulation properties okay that are better than say conventional building materials mm. as well as the recyclable nice sustainability that I'm recycling tires um, that you actually and it's doing and that. it's a community um, effort where a few people yes. band together and then just decide to do the dang thing and and I think mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if it's part of the earth ship design but I think it was it was something that um, my friend Kevin showed me um, where they put tubes like pipes uh, that where the house is built, I think it was an earthship house. They have like a berm on one side, but it's not just the berm. It's the fact that they put tubes yes. for the air to come in and flow through. And the, as it flows through the tubes, the earth cools it in the summer and warms it in the winter. So 
Is that part of the Earthship, do you know? More natural air conditioning. Okay, yeah, exactly. I can't remember if that was Earthship, but I have seen that design. Um, the other thing that has crossed my path when I was looking more into the tiny homes area was there's a prepper uh, colony up in the middle of the country that are using like almost doomsday shelters, which is kind of an interesting yeah. concept around this too. Yeah, I uh, saw that there was... As much as we might think they're the crazies, they... I, they're they're doing exactly the sorts of things that we want. Yeah, it's it's That's also quite that. it's also quite interesting. Um, re recently came across something where it was similar. It was the um, old munitions bunkers. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. and they were yeah. they were set four hundred feet apart, and it was somewhere near like a little bit away from the Badlands, which is also That's badass probably, enough. Yeah. Um, you know, and it right. and it's weird because it's like I want I would like and I aspire to walk the line between like not prepper in the, f in the, not doomsday, you know, um, I, I, have you guys ever heard of the term um, solar punk? So solar punk. Yeah. So solar punk is really interesting. It's um, you know, if you think of cyberpunk, which is really cool and it's cybernetic implants and it's like what happens when you lean heavily into the cyberpunk ideals and, it, and, you know, it, but it tends to be at the detriment of the planet. It's all of those things except high future. And also what would happen in rather than fostering like this high tech sensibilities, it's more like fostering the planet and everything that you're doing is actually cultivating the planet, building it up. Everybody, um, you know, kind of basically uh, solar punk. So like everything is more renewable and sustainable. And so you'll see a lot of these structures and maybe I can show them on camera at some point um, rather than like all these downtrodden, no nothing living around it thing. It's just like tons of green and tons of, um, you know, just basically tons of flourishing of nature and wildlife and things like that. And it would be the kind of utopia that is cyberpunk, where if cyberpunk is a dystopia, then um, solar punk is a utopia. Um, and that's what I'd love to get to without having the doomsday vibes <laughs> of being uh, of, of that, the pre that usually comes with the prepper community. Solar punk. It's really, it's really cool. The art style is really cool as well. Um, I have to jump off cause I have to end the stream. Uh, if anybody else wants to raise their hand, I'm not exactly sure. I'm going to try to give, gonna, um, I'd like to ask a, one last question sort of thing. Well, you can stay, but I need to end this. I need to end the stream before it randomly ends for me. The one on YouTube. Okay. So you can stay if you want. Do, do you want to ask the question real quick? I and ask then... the question real quick. Um, what content, uh, it's not so much what content is of the people that you know around you that might be interested in, in tiny homes or tiny homes on wheels or self-reliance, portable or attainable housing, uh, what would you like to see or what do you think would bring in other people that you know in the community that might like to see something along these lines, whether they be tiny home builders, eco villages, renewable, sustainable, what do you think? Everybody, anybody. What type of content would you like to see? Yeah. Well, for me, I mean, I'll just, I can go first um, and then we can ask Bishop. Um, I would really like to see more of the, the solar punk ideals, more of what would happen rather than being like so high tech. I love high tech, but I want to see high tech for good instead of high tech to get into that dystopian cyberpunk 2022 vibe or 20, 2022, 2077. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that would be my ideal. Actually, I just see we have somebody in the audience called Solar Baby. Uh, <laughs> I'm curious as to the name. Uh, do you have anything you'd like to see? So I think I need, do you have the ability to push, to, uh, have people that are raising their hands to speak? Yes. I might have. Okay, cool. Exactly. So you can I, put them. Raised, I, yeah, okay, yeah, because I um I'm gonna end the stream and I will be right back. But thank you guys. I will see you in a bit. Okay, Zaku. Let's see. Can I, I think I can? So, um, ready. 
Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Okay. Hey, everybody. So I hope that was fun for everyone. Um, that was, uh, I do appreciate you dealing with the technical snafus. Um, that is, <laughs> it's always a challenge. Um, but as you know, I'm not normally a streamer. So uh, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed that. And you like the idea. Um, the idea of solar punk. One of the things that we talked about in our squirrel army is also uh, squirrel punk because we have uh, a bunch of squirrels in our uh, community. So uh, squirrels are basically our neurodiverse community. It just kind of came out of the woodwork over on our discord. And what you just saw was us discussing a little bit about sustainable sustainable living, um, but how to, yes, hello, hello. Yeah, just figuring out the best way, um, let's see here, uh, just the best way to kind of put your best foot forward as far as bettering the planet, but also being able to keep all of our fun technology. Um, yeah, and I also want to say a big shout out and thank you to uh, Opti, feel free to go over to his Instagram. He just started and, um, yeah, it, he, he's, he and I are going to be building this buttercup vision and I will show you guys it one more time, um, when it's not crazy. And I think you definitely can actually see this part and I will take a back seat to my own content here. Hey guys, I wanted to introduce you to buttercup also known as the 1976 GMC Motorhome, or you may have seen it on the movie Stripes as the urban assault vehicle. My best friend ever of 10 years came from the Midwest, as did I, to revamp one of these little bitsy homes. We're doing this as a little nod to the Geeks Abroad project, showing that not all who wander are lost, and we're doing it in the form of little bitsy homes. And I will show you real quick. If you don't know Buttercup from Princess Bride, <laughs> I you cut won't myself know this, off. but we are going to have fun storming the castle. Please follow our journey. It'll take a miracle. Yay. Um, I was really overwhelmed by the amount of support that came out of um, just posting about that initially. I didn't think that you guys would be interested at all. But when I looked and I was just like, I was really taken aback by having my Facebook, I just posted about it because essentially um, one year ago on Twitter, and I guess this sometimes works and sometimes doesn't, I don't know. Um, I'll put it in its, maybe that'll work if I put it in like a, no, that's too zoomed in. <laughs> uh yeah, so like I posted about getting the RV, there's only a very few amount of them in the nation, and I asked your thoughts. And so what you just saw was over on our Discord, we had a discussion group, and this is just the beginning. So that was the initial dream five years or one year ago, and we've already gotten it. So some of the comments, um, I can bring this over. Yeah, some of the comments were, uh, I, I'm a, yeah. So let's see some of the comments is it's absolutely awesome. We're living full time in our school bus conversion right now, exclusively solar powered. It drastically cut down our cost of living. We spend most of the time boondocking and it's just so cool that you can convert a van and you can have it be technologically awesome. If you stayed with us for the entire stream, good on you. If you haven't, scroll back through to the beginning because we react to a lot of like hack five builds, engineer vans, stuff like that. I really just wanted to do a lot of different things with this channel, um, especially because it doesn't serve very many of my subscribers anymore. Thanks, YouTube. This is actually Chris, who was um, super excited to check out the RV. We brought it to one of the Linux user groups um, and a Jupiter Broadcasting meetup. So that's the uh, founder of that and his wife um, enjoying the RV. So if you want to follow the progress, head over to Geeks Abroad. Um, we're going to definitely be posting. I actually have that video that I've been working on and I'm going to post that 
um, ASAP. I think we're mostly on Instagram and Twitter. If you, if you like Instagram, um, I basically post there more often than I do anywhere else. Um, just because it does, I doesn't seem to censor as much <laughs> as, uh, many, many other platforms. So yeah. Uh, geeks. Oh, I'm just like in a tiny little window. Didn't realize that. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Um, but I hope I hope you guys are enjoying this content. We have um, Geeks Abroad was always kind of a passion project. It was six years in the making, and we just dropped the episode three of of that. So, um, and YouTube has already kind of buried it. So I don't know. Um, I really don't know what to do. I wish I did. It would be really cool if this didn't happen. Uh, yeah, thanks for the stream. I appreciate that. Um, like, it's kind of crazy how if you if you talk about tech, that's cool. They appreciate that. But if you talk about um, anything that has like a cross section of tech, for instance, this is us doing Geeks Abroad um, and just dropping that video. We just dropped it, but it hasn't been sent to anybody yet. So I, I'd be interested in just seeing how many of you actually know it exists. But, but check out how nervous we were. Cue the bumbling idiots. So yeah. we're actually going to the Zurich Games Festival <laughs> in search of coffee. Then we had a now. I think we have. We were. Yeah, I would so love to know. So we're going to the Zurich Games Festival. <laughs> then we had. A there's a lot of stuff there. Yeah, thanks, Brem, for posting it. I was taking a while to get that link. So, <laughs> yeah, um, would love to see your your what you've thought about. Oh, that's a perfect freeze frame. But yeah, here's the intro to it. Super excited to see everybody. <laughs> we actually went on stage and did our whole thing. Thank you guys so much. Us going on stage, that was absolutely nerve wracking. <laughs> it goes pixelated again. Okay, well, it, it wouldn't be able to be pixelated without Nixie Pixel making things pixelated, I guess. Um. If you head over to geekbeacon.org, we're starting to post a lot of our videos and a lot of our content there. Um, big shout out to the rest of the Geek Beacon crew who has been helping with transcribing and getting a lot of stuff. It's just, I don't know what's going on. It's something we have to ask our partners about because, man, I imagine if we were like Ninja or something, that that just would not fly. So, um yeah, those Tron effects. Yay, I'm glad that you recognize that. I've been keeping the Tron theme for like over a decade. Yeah, you guys are great. Okay, um, so that is another little thing that we've been keeping in the sidelines, the Bitsy and the Holmes. Um, yeah, so let us know if there's anything that we can do to improve the stream without just... Um, <laughs> completely scrapping it and making it um, not pixelated, that would be cool. All right, you guys, I will talk nerdy to you in the next one. And I've been posting comment. Uh, I have like three videos up on my Linux channel, which I'm sure YouTube didn't tell you about that either. Uh, so if you're looking for those traditional I talk to camera style videos, um, head on over to there, uh, over there. And um, you can see me play some Linux games and things like that. I posted the link for the Linux channel, my Linux open source, my open source, and my hacking channel. <laughs> Yay, thanks, Mike. You have a great day too. Von Shutter, you have an awesome day. I have a, a awkward hand 
hand gesture. Bishop, thank you so much for weighing in on, on your van life and your situation. We have a lot more to unpack there. Um, I would love for us to do this again. This is our first time. It's only awkward the first time. <laughs> and that being said, Lama loves you. Bye.